on a, in a material called semiconductor, which was known to the physicists earlier, but not a material for practical application till then. It is at the time 47 I have wrote, written, it was really the 47 to 40, 50 in that period when, which was very, very jubilee very interesting period when there was a tremendous, it is a revolutionary period in the history of <coughs> electronics. In the history of electronics, it was a revolution. Transistor was discovered. Ultimately, they got, the three scientists, they got Nobel Prize for that. And the first device was made in a material, not silicon, which is so popular today, but in germanium. It was a point contact device, but it has a tremendous potential. It started with that. Miniaturization of electronics start, started with that. It did, it had all the properties of a triode or pentode, but with a much lower voltage, 10, 15, 30 volts, that those days, with a much lower power consumption, one watt or less, and much smaller space, maybe one tenth to one hundredth of those days electronics. You have seen perhaps in your house, some of your family, you have big radio sets, which is now a, you know, uh, no longer in use. And thereafter, research focus totally was on the miniaturization, further and further miniaturization. And the material silicon, due to various reasons, became much more practically important than germanium because of various, we are not discussing all those critical issues here. And a technology called silicon planar technology came and that started in 1950s. That started, you can see, uh, I can afterwards show you silicon planar technology in the 50s and it led to integrated circuits. You know the Jack Kilby was rewarded, awarded Nobel Prize after 30 years for that basic invention which revolutionized the world. The world today, our life cannot sustain without a microchip, microprocessors and various other things. Okay? So integrated circuits started developing and growing rapidly during 60s and there we shall be discussing that there was a competition between two kinds of devices, one called bipolar devices, the other called MOSFETs. Ultimately MOSFET gained more momentum because of various reasons and VLSI concept, LSI, VLSI concept came and it led to a system on a chip called SOC. Simultaneously along with that, you can see the slide, simultaneously along with that, it was found that the technology used in micro, microelectronics also could be used into microfabricate three-dimensional microstructures. On materials like silicon, which was earlier thought is an electronic material, afterward it was found that it is a very good mechanical material too. So, there was a new kind of technology it started evolving. That is just a focus of this particular workshop, microsystems or MEMS, and it started with micro machining, borrowed from microelectronics technology, and MEMS came up and started flourishing. We shall be discussing that afterward in detail. We shall now quick, quickly go because our main after half an hour we are switching, we shall switch to MEMS. Already five minutes have passed. As all of you know that the technology to how transistor from transistor to today's VLSI, LSI system on chip concept came, it came to various phases. I said valves, valve is obsolete today, but mainly important thing is PCB. PCB technology was started from printed circuit board, from printing technology, let me say, lithography and other things photolithography and silicon planar technology. 
photolithography and silicon planar technology. Linear, I told you about bipolar ICs. These things, as you all of you know. This is very a device, con continuously there was a shrinking of device dimension, making it smaller and smaller. Chip size started increasing because one tried to in incorporate a full system on a chip, speed and power dissipation. Speed has to be increased, power dissipation has to be reduced, and speed power, power delay product is a very important parameter. Microprocessors, CPUs, etc., DSP chips, on chip, analog, this was another very serious thing. This is another very serious thing because mostly what we do is analog functions. You collect a signal from a voice, it is an analog signal, but you would want to do various processing on it. Earlier it was entirely analog. Digital was not developed, but thereafter things changed because of various reasons as you know, already have gone through those courses. And you know that analog signal is a starting, analog signal again at the end is mag the magnified version is also very important. But intermediately, it has to be processed through digital means. And it is important to integrate analog functions and digital functions on the same chip to make, a cost of, make it cost effective and simple and attractive commercially. And that is very important on chip analog by digital functions. And bipolar and MOS technology is integrated on the same chip, by MOS it is called. And ultimately, as you know, the world is trending towards nano. Everybody is speaking of nano. Nano, some people call it nanomania, and those who are totally exaggerated by that, and they call it nanophobia. People say, people, some people are saying, nano, every, we are very happy to make it finally to declare, I have made it a nano. It has practically, frankly speaking, the microelectronics truly has become a nano system. Because the today's microelectronics, the devices are extremely small. They are dimensions in the range of nanometers. It is not chemically and arbitrarily done. It is done all by structured manufacturing technology. And today, therefore, the today's ICs, they are called nanoscale MOS pipes. Some called nano CMOS, nano CMOS. So this is the train which has taken place over the years. And it was guided by somebody very famous, Moore, Gordon Moore. He predicted in 1965 that these are, they are real visionaries. Gordon Moore, a co-founder of Intel Corporation. He predicted that the chips, this, this, uh, their, this capacity will enhance twice fact, by a factor of two every two years or every one and a half years. Chip size will the device size will shrink, chip size will increase, and like this, capacity, speed, power, etc. All points of view, the improvement will take place by a factor of two every one and a half years to two years. And that trend was going on till 2005 very well. You see, it is a log scale plot. I will give you another plot afterwards. Moore's, this is called Moore's plot. It is a semi log. This is these are years. This is years. These are years of development, and this is the number of components per chip, number of transistors per chip. There is a straight line. It means it is semi-log curve. Means the logarithmic increase, exponential rise, and this is a phenomenal development. And in this respect, I would like to say because we are one of the as rightly pointed out, Dr. Nayak. We are one of the few institutes in this in this country who were who got involved in microelectronics, names and integrated optics business from 80s onward. Okay, so our I have just I will try to give you a few slides on what happened in IIT Kharagpur over the years since the end of 80s till today. Till today, I do not have information much for the last three, four years. Before that, I have more or less some information. I will try to. And here I mention some of the important developments which took place in our laboratory, which developed a 
silicon technology lab, silicon processing technology lab for bipolar diagnosis. Started with telecard and various other things. And one of the most important things for ISRO here is relay driver chip for satellite. Relay driver chips for, for pure microelectronics thing. However, we did a lot of work for other people also. And that's how we gradually got into the business of microelectronics in a lab completely fabricated by without going to without going to anybody even chip mass fabrication was done here some of the diagram of the pictures of the lab those days here i show one gentleman many of whom you know him probably professor s call who was my junior colleague very closely involved in all programs but he just at a very young age he expired and that was an irreparable loss for the department and for the activity of IIT Kharagpur. And here, so many you can see, and others are some of the facilities of the lab. You can look at it. And these are the, some of the chips which were made in IIT Kharagpur using our own facilities. Some small micrographs of those chips, you can have a look. ECL chip, emitter coupled logic, you know about it. It is the fastest with the same feature size. It is the fastest logic, including all bipolar and MOS logic families. Ultimately, it is high power consuming, ultimately, unfortunately. So it is, its use is very limited. Only in very special application space and other, ECL is still being used but we developed for the first time in the country. Analog multiplier chip on a linear bipolar array, which was developed in the lab, which was taken over finally by Bell. ASIC relay driver chip, I talked about the thing which he made for Mr. Gwen of ISRO Sachs. It is called Isaac. And Professor Das is just sitting here. His research topic was on a topic called iron beam sputtered polysilicon film. This was developed by this kind of polysilicon register was developed by Professor Shomen Das in the lab. And he did, made a lot of investigations on it in his PhD on high current pulse streaming, etc. And this is one interesting work by Dr. Shomen Das. Sorry, sorry. This is very interesting. I think we don't have time to discuss this thing, so it's just quickly bypass it. But this is important. This is called polysilicon fuse. You know, just like our fuses which we use in our electric our homes, in the micro circuits also we make use of small fuses. For, for customizing a chip. There are two kinds of fuse. One is called anti-fuse. Anti-fuse means a fuse which becomes open circuit after application of voltage. And fuse link, which got becomes a short circuit after application of a current. This is a fuse link developed in the lab. And Professor Das made us investigation on how the fuse behaves, how its resistance changes with time, before and then he made some physical investigations on that. You can have a look before here I can you cannot you can see this thing better in this plasma TV. Uh, you see that just before fusion how it looks like. It melts and like to a channel at the center of the poly register. Now, this was the story of IIT Kharagpur. But IIT Kharagpur had to stop somewhere because of limited facilities. We could not make a device with dimensions less than Q microns. But technology did not stop here. All over the world, there was tremendous effort. And companies like Intel, they are the pioneer in making things smaller and smaller. And you know Intel, all these chips today. The Intel is pioneer. There are many other big companies. Intel is pioneer in microfabrication of chips. 
and I have given you some story about how the things changed during the past two, three, de three decades, and how things become have gone to from micro dimensions to nano dimensions over the years. I do not want to repeat that here. And here the story of scaling comes. Scaling means making dimension smaller or improving the properties. For example, gate oxide thickness scaling, first off. <coughs> you know, for the MOSFETs, most important parameter is the gate. In the field effect device, it does not draw any DC current. At the gate, current is zero. DC current is zero. Only during transients, there is a current because of the capacitances. Okay? And that is the asset of MOSFET that you can make devices which are called dynamic devices, dynamic ROMs, DROMs, CD-ROMs, and then you can make dynamic logic also, which is not possible in bipolar. Bipolar cannot keep a voltage for a long time because current is or it is current operated, it is voltage operated. And the gate oxide, if gate oxide becomes leaky, this property is lost. And as you are reducing the dimension, gate oxide gets becomes thinner and thinner. It becomes leaky. Now, how to prevent that leak? Keeping the dimension small is a challenge. And that was that was very well investigated by physicists and technologists all over the world and chemists all over the world. And you know that the revolutions have taken place. Leader is Intel. Junction scaling, making junction smaller, both length and breadth, as well as in the depth. And VCC scaling is very important. VCC or VDD in this case, then supply voltage. If you reduce it, then power distribution gets reduced by, by twice. VDD is proportional to VDD square. So reducing the VCC is a very quick. Then threshold voltage is reduced. Many, many other issues are there. And that gradually you know, came into the picture. And there was a tremendous investigation. And 1990 is the golden era of scaling all over the world and they had these three scaling factors became very important. Here in fact again Moore's law curve and here it shows up to 2005 it is good it's called traditional scaling era. More or less the same technology being followed with shrinking dimension. Additional technology there was innovation was not that much but after 2005 there was tremendous technological innovation, technological innovations. And Intel, again, let me tell you, they were the key player in that particular area, key player. And because of lack of time, I cannot go into details. One important thing is, I think all of you, from your common sense, you understand. Now, you know that people are speaking of now CMOS with gate length, channel length of the order of 22 nanometer. 22 nanometer means 220 angstrom. 22 or 20 nanometer, 200 angstrom. It is an extremely small dimension. Ultraviolet light wavelength is typically 2050 to 300 nanometer. So 22 nanometer, you understand how small it is. Much, much smaller than a virus, okay? So today's advanced CMOS technology, their minimum feature size is 22 nanometer, 45 nanometer, 65 nanometer, in that dimension. And then gate oxide is so small that the lower, the gate oxide is no longer a continuous stream. It is scattered atom. There we have called it gate oxide running out of atom. That that the so-called techni technical technologists in Intel used to describe it like this. They got getting out of atom, okay? Very thin, scattered atom, and then there are many, many physical problems, mainly the tunneling current. You, you see that here I show some region, <coughs> some region which is above 100 ampere, per centimeter square where tunneling, it is almost fully tunneling. 
one has to keep myself itself within that limit this is for nitride at silicon dioxide this is for silicon dioxide nitride is better so this is a challenge this is a challenge let me tell you this is a challenge and then so we have talked about the traditional scaling for few minutes i cannot give much time on it so my topic is again to mess names i have to switch over to names after 5 minutes traditional scaling i have all quickly covered then post traditional scale beyond 2005 what started happening and then two factors became very very important one is the pmos pmos as you know the hole mobility is much less than the electron mobility it is speedier less speedier and you have to do something for w by l ratio control but that unnecessarily consumes area so if you can improve the mobility of holes in the pmos there will be a great gain similarly as you reduce the nmos size also there are various scattering events which dominate that reduces mobility so you have to do something to work on that that was a challenge is called mobility booster it can be shown if the silicon it has a uniaxial strain which is compressile in nature hole mobility improves and if silicon has a uniaxial strain which is tensile in nature electron mobility improves so if you can do something so the automatically there are certain in certain regions of silicon compressile strain is longitudinal strain is produced you can have a mobile emos there with higher hole mobility you can produce some regions where the silicon has a tensile strain uniaxial and can locate in mos there the electron mobility in there so that lot of physics structure physics investigations were there and in 99 90 nanometer technology first intel introduced a, some some methodology which later was used by everybody then is poly depletion elimination polysilicon gate is popular for various reasons and polysilicon being a semiconductor when you apply gate bias it start gets depleting and depletion of polysilicon increases the effective oxide thickness of the gate that increases the threshold voltage so you have to do something either you replace polysilicon or do something and people started use once again metal gate another thing is i told i talked about the very leaky oxide gate oxide get, getting leaky tunneling so what i can do i can do something whereas effective oxide thickness is higher physically the thickness of the insulator is higher so that the tunneling is reduced but effectively the oxide thickness is less so what you can do for that if you can use a high dielectric constant material in place of silicon dioxide then effectively you can have a reduced thickness but physically the thickness is more so the tunneling is reduced this is called high k dielectric hi came in high k dielectric constant concept and then future challenges you can have a say that how in this is important this is important that this channel region of silicon in the pmos has a compressile uniaxial strain it is done by silicon germanium epitaxial deposition on the source drain side and it it's because of the bulk expansion of silicon germanium the region in between the channel gets compressed and it is a uniaxial strain as a result the hole mobility is in, in this region is improved and as a result such pmos work better than ordinary pmos however for nmos what people do is on the polysilicon they deposit a nitride and this deposited nitride on polysilicon produces a tensile strain this is because of the dissimilar and this is a metallurgical thing and there is a this effectively enhances the 
sails it. That means that tensile force is created over this region. And as a result, the electron mobility here is more than the normal without the nitride at silicon. Silicon nitride stress layer it is called. This is the technology for NMOS. So PMOS with a this kind of technology and NMOS with this kind of technology. So let us not go into the two, we have very less time. A typical picture of, it is called scanning, tunneling microscopic picture of, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I was showing this. Sorry, I'm sorry. This is interesting, that is why I keep it, I'm to, wanted to show you this particular slide. This is the scanning tunneling microscope study of a typical MOSFET in the nanometric region. This is get electrode. This in this case, uh, there is a polysilicon kind of thing material. It could be metal also. Tungsten is quite often used. Only 1.1 nanometer silicon dioxide. How scattered you have seen the oxide. The molecules are random and the, it, it is very, it, it's, its structure is not perfect. And the silicon substrate is a crystalline substrate. How ordered the atoms, have you seen it? Crystalline substrate, all the atoms are beautifully ordered. Only at the interface there is a disordering. So this is an interesting picture that is why I showed you. I am not going into the details of these things. You know that this is a picture which may be of interest to you. How the 45 nanometer microprocessor products from Intel look like in dimension, proportionate dimension, single crore, dual crore, quadruple quad, six core, eight core, etc. 45 nanometer is a very standard technology all over the world. 20 nanometer is come upcoming, but it will be replaced by still smaller dimension in the near future. I do not know what is the status of things in SCL, because the Nayak metal. What is the situation in SCL now? It is now functioning. Good. So in our country also, we are not sitting idle. In the government level, there are an effort by the earlier Department of Electronics and afterward by ISRO. The Chandigarh plant has been renovated and it is coming up with a 0.18 or 0.13 micron type technology. It is getting, and person Nayak is still involved with that very much. I am a member of that society. Sometimes being because I cannot all attend all the meetings. It is, but otherwise, India is lags behind very much, let me tell you. And very few countries can compete. Very few countries. It is in the monopoly of a few in the world. And top among them is Intel. They have plants in certain region. In Israel, there is a plant. And maybe in, they are saying that they will be setting up a plant in, 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 uh, in somewhere in, in the in our locality. Noida, it is coming up. Okay, so I think just have to stop somewhere this thing. There are so many <coughs> other things. I cannot otherwise start my next talk.
before concluding, let me tell you something. That people are not sitting idle. As you are getting shrinking, as you are making smaller and smaller, silicon technology, it may appear that it will gradually lose its validity. Because MOSFET will not work as MOSFET. Quantum concepts have to bring in. And that is why people are all now trying into the other avenues, going into the other avenues, using quantum mechanical concept directly in silicon technology and in general into semiconductor technology. And various things have happened today. We have heard of quantum structures like quantum wells, quantum wires, quantum dots, etc. They are being in carbon nanotubes, silicon nanotubes. These are all quantum structures and they are being investigated in detail. But technologically, let me tell you, commercially, to come to the level of silicon technology, it will take maybe another 10 years or 15 years. I do not know how long. Silicon technology is so mature. Let me tell you, 20 nanometer technology is not a matter of joke. All nanostructures, which you speak of by the material science people, their dimensions vary from 5 nanometer to 100 nanometer. And this is 20 nanometer is the physical horizontal dimension. Small features inside is sub nanometer. And people are making them. And very regularly and with a very high yield, that is the technological status today. So to compare with that by the other revenues is not easy. It will take time. Thank you very much. I'll go to the next topic. I told you that MEMS technology is a child born out of microelectronics technology. So already I have mentioned about it. So I repeat the same structure, picture, same slide where it shows at the end there are two divisions from integrated circuit technology developed in 60s. One side was the continuous development of VLSI system on chip, etc. Other side was micro machining and MEMS and microsystem. In Europe, MEMS is not preferred. People used to call it microsystems. Whereas in America, USA, and the rest of the world, MEMS is a very popular technology. They are the same. Because our, our, our workshop is on MEMS, basically, I should mention a few things about the micro-machining in MEMS and microsystems evolution in the beginning of the technology. You know, the discovery of strong piezoresistive effects in silicon and germanium in 1954 by Smith was a prime mover, very important thing in MEMS technology. <coughs> a resistor, a resistor in a microstructure, resistance, resistor means resistance, dope resistor in a microstructure fashion. If it is under pressure, if it is stressed, in resistivity changes quite differently, quite sensitively compared to strain gauge, metal strain gauges. There are reasons behind it. This was an important aspect why MEMS became, became a dominant technology in the very beginning. In 1954, you see that this is an important paper. Then photolithography and etching recognized as a tool for micro-machining. Earlier, the mechanical engineers, they did not believe in this kind of thing. They believed in lathe, milling, and all these machines. And miniaturization of very small, so you have seen that probably some of you in the Bharatil Bell in, in, in Bangalore and some other places, you have seen watchmaker's lathe. Very small, tiny version. Robotic versions of various things are coming up. But it was found that if micro-machining technology borrowed from photolithography and microelectronics fabrication is used, 
at the same time you can produce hundreds and thousands of products simultaneously called batch processing that advantage is not there in conventional machining process in heavy mechanical engineering though you can make very small tiny products but it is very difficult to make thousands of devices quickly batch processing silicon was established an excellent mechanical material by a pioneering paper by peterson in 1982 in proceeding site report. this paper discusses in detail about the properties of silicon not only electronics but electronic properties are well known mechanical properties of silicon he challenged he found that it is as good as maybe better than stainless steel in several aspects and it could be processed very easily by fabricated in the nano back microstructure form by the and then ultimately after this paper there is a mushrooming growth of mains industries in silicon valley along with ics along with the traditional chips microchips both that was a silicon valley mostly was a design area but there was many plants at that, that time for making chips also that shifted to very other parts of the world slowly but it started with that but then mains became a dominant field and in fact there was a time when we started our mains activity in iit kharagpur we had an observation the lab we created may not be suitable for microelectronics but very suitable for mains and we started but thereafter mains also technology also removed further in fact in one of the npsm meeting when zaravi was there as a member of that committee i told why don't you make a shift of focus from microchips to mains and microchips for mains and borrow loan from the market and provide in fact you can beat the market in this region but there are the mindset papers and this did not happen after that maybe a oh, very long time after that npsm gave some money 50 crore and something happened but still let me tell you we are far 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 behind the picture this gives a comparable account of that silicon stainless steel and other silicon not i can look have a look to stainless stainless steel and silicon color in fine in many ways silicon has a better property better mechanical properties hardness point of view from young modulus point of view lighter much lighter than stainless steel but other properties are very good similarly quartz is very good and people there are the focus of interest from silicon stainless steel was a unique process material for mechanical engineer to these things technology i said that more or less similar technology is used some of the techniques which are used in um, microelectronics the same thing is also used in games fabrication for example photolithography isotopic etching chemical etching reactive ion etching reactive ion beam etching these are techniques which are common to both Bands and microlith. The other things are also used, and specifically for names, there are certain technology, certain techniques which are very specific to names: double-sided alignment and lithography, etch-stop processes, deep reactive and DRI, very popular. Deep, deep reactive ion etching. Professor Das Prasad will give you some kind of details of that. Sacrificial layer etching for surface micro-machining. wafer bonding very important issue for mains deposition of very special films which are not used in normally in microfabrication microelectronics liga process not much in use today but it was very important due up to say about 15 20 years ago micro molding as nil mcb we shall discuss little bit about that and special packaging mains packaging is entirely different from microelectronics packaging. It is the most critical issue in mains, the packaging, rather than the other manufacturing steps. Also, my good deal about it. The micro machining, as I told you, is a starting process. It is nothing but the incorporate photolithography and etching. Let me tell you, same technique which is used in microfabrication in mains, in 
microelectronic photolithography and etching they are modified or adapted suitable for producing microstructures in bulk or surface if you do bulk bulk, bulk microstructure this is called bulk micromation and if you do structures on the surface it's called surface micromation this it is more or less you understand that let me give you some in important thing which i think dr das will give you detail but basically this is a very popular kind of diagram taken from books as well as from internet i mentioned in the very beginning of the both the presentations that my slides some of things some of the slides were prepared by me but mostly were taken from internet and some from other sources like journals and books this shows the bulk machining step 100 silicon wafer with a p plus diffusion in somewhere here then it is deposited on which silicon nitride is deposited everywhere and windows are opened in certain region by photolithography this is silicon nitride windows opened here here and here in a typical example then silicon nitride from this region you make a anisotropic chemical etching a chemical etching which reacts differently on different crystalline directions in this particular example say maybe etching in potassium hydroxide solution will have a very slow etch rate on 111 wall direction whereas high more or less rapid etch etching on 100 direction as a result these side walls are automatically created with 111 planes and you note carefully that here i have made a v group by this it is automatically self terminating reaction two 111 planes have touched or contacted here no further reaction will take place a v group is created in this case a small nozzle is created which is very common in our printed our our printer desjet printer in desjet printer nozzles are created by this technique whereas here you see that a membrane has been created because it highly dip post boron deposited region does not etch in the cleavage solution automatically there will be self etch stop and this region after the removal of the nitride you get a membrane and this membrane is very important in many applications in mains Wait, and I said that we get in. I think also Das will give you some more details about this. Let us go into the surface micromachining. This is, of course, today is very important because main structures are becoming very, very small, and their bulk structures are not suitable. A typical example of surface micromachining: you take the substrate, deposit a layer. This layer is known as sacrificial layer. for reasons which will be clear now and you lead using a lithograph photolithography step make a window a small opening here and this is called anchor region repeat i am repeating take a substrate which is silicon substrate deposit a layer which is called i will give you what are the layer some details i will give you later deposit a layer which is called sacrificial layer all through then by photolithography make a opening here and this region is called anchor region then next step you deposit another film which is called structural layer which de which is deposited in such a way that there it is a there is a conformal deposition everywhere okay and you have made a photolithography step in this after this deposition so that you get a structural layer so i repeat repeat next is structural layer deposition covering the anchor region and the lith and the lithography and etching step to make a structure like this finally do a step called sacrificial etching you select a chemical which selectively reacts with the white region which is called sacrificial layer but does not react either with either with the surface substrate or with the structural layer 
what happens? The HN removes the sacrificial region even under the structural regions and you get a cantilever suspended over the surface, anchored here. So this is a cantilever of another material anchored over silicon at this point and has multiple applications. In fact, there are 99% applications of MEMS today is cantilever based. Let me mention a few about the, some of the sacrificial layer, etc. And maybe Professor Das will discuss in detail about that. You can have a look. I'm not going into the detail. Which one is suitable for sacrificial layer? Which one is suitable for microstructure? What is buffered kind of things? Okay. There are many problems in structural and surface micromachining. Main problem is sticking, called, this is called, what do you call it, stiction. Some of you are doing research in this field. Stiction is a very important problem. It has to be avoided. The structure collapses and gets stuck to the surface. Unless you do special, take special measures, the stiction cannot be avoided. And this is something has to be done for that molecular forces are involved and mechanically as an electromechanically you have to do something and one good advantage of surface micromachining is because everything is done from the top just like microelectronics fabrication you don't have to do anything from the back so it is compatible with the microelectronics technology and today's microchips in today's MEMS product, one thing must be mentioned here. MEMS, what is the full name for it? Micro electromechanical system, not sensors or actuators. System, system is complete with electronics. So you have to, if, are you make, if you are making a sensor, sensor along with the auto, auto, electronic circuitry has to be developed on the same chip that is the ultimate target. But it is difficult to make the sensor and the chip on the same chip, same circuit on the same chip is a challenging task called integrated sensors or smart sensors. Okay? And bulk micro-machining does not, is not suitable for that because it is, both sides are used. However, surface micro-machining which could be miniaturized to even nanoscale region today. Okay? is compatible with the microelectronics fabrication and in certain cases in the today's CMOS, advanced CMOS processing called CMOS compatible, CMOS compatible, this is very important and which therefore slowly and steadily bulk micromachining is giving way to surface micromachining for advanced applications, not for ordinary applications. Deep reactive ionizing, I have told about it. A typical structure which is created by deep reacting it will look like this. You have seen that how beautiful structure, the vertical is so, it is called, the width is smaller than the height. It is very difficult to achieve such structure in normal etching. Isn't it? Not? Almost 100% vertical side work and with a very narrow width, which is possible only by such process as deep, deep reactive and etching. And Today's advanced CMOS, advanced MEMS technology uses that. And we are in uh, India, we have sent several, including HCL, we have DRI. We are fortunate to have it. Another thing, as I told you, that bonding is a very important. In many, case, in many cases, several silicon substrates, or silicon and glass, etc., has to be bonded together. You cannot use an ordinary adhesive to bond it. Then it is not strong. Sometimes there are very advanced epoxy app nowadays available, but for many applications, just by epoxy bonding, you cannot do it. So there are techniques which are which originate from metallurgical processing. This can example of called glass to silicon anodic bonding, silicon to silicon bonding, silicon to glass bonding, etc. And these are very established techniques specific to MEMS technique. 
and at the end, in fact, I, I have to slowly because again time is coming up. It's a nice lecture is there. Uh, you see that names can be classified in various ways, but in one typical way is that it could be a mechanical kind of names, strain, pressure, flow rates, inertial parameters, etc. Thermal kind of names, broadband, narrowband, IR detection, bolometer arrays, etc. Chemical, pH, gas sensors, electrochemical. Biological material, very, very important. The Professor Das is in this group is doing very well. <coughs> Cell specific, molecular specific, implantable, non implantable. These are some of the typical terminologies involved. Magnetic, yes, but very limited application of magnetic, Hall effect, magnetoresistive sensing. And one field, though I belong to the same department, I did not start that in my lab because of that reason. I do not know what is the reason behind it. I thought MIMS means mechanical kind of thing. MIMS could be my topic also, electronics topic. And that RF MIMS concept, which is so important today. Fortunately, I am involved in such projects today with some other groups, including here. And in fact, you can make many products by using MIMS technology for wireless <coughs> applications. And switch, for example, and other things, sensor. Various things. MIMS activities in IIT Kharagpur, Professor Das will tell about it. I was personally involved in some silicon MIMS development when I was here in the initial phase, when Professor Das and others were closely involved with me. Quartz MIMS along with ISRO. In fact, another lab of ISRO, we are fortunate that one lab is now in Trivandrum of Mr. Amitabha Bose. He utilized our facility for making quartz games for acceleration sensing called double and end, double ending tuning for DTF. And the labs which you have seen in the earlier diagram, earlier picture, they are microelectronics lab, started during 80s and 90s in our lab, which has been further modified over the last five, ten years, five, six years. You can see a different new machines, new equipment, etc. But whatever I have shown is valid till 2003, 4, 5, did that particular era. But even in the same time, NPSM was very effective, national program for smart materials, was very effective, very active to set up certain labs. One lab we got in IIT Kharagpur along with IIC Bangalore, the MIMS design lab. In fact, the two labs initially started in India, one in ISC, then IIT Kharagpur designed for designing MAME structure. Afterward, there are many, many, there are many such labs were created. And this shows, that show a picture of our MAME lab, which, where you'll work. I'll show you some structures which was created in IIT Kharagpur. In fact, IIT Kharagpur spent long time on development of accelerometers. Here I show a structure. Of course, in it is it is simulated level, but we have uh, we have got, we have we developed several such accelerometers of in the lab in silicon. This, Ataki Foreman, will you discuss this in detail? Anyway, I can just let me tell you a little bit about this because I have another few minutes. These are silicon microstructure rigid here. This is called frame. <laughs> silicon is microstructured by photolithography and what called micro machine in a structure like this, where this is a frame rigid frame and these are suspended mass. We call it hoop mass and which are ha suspended from the frame via four flexors, four beams, thin beam. It is freely more or less suspended like this. Okay? 
and over these beams we deposit some registers, deposit or grow some registers and which are shown in the next diagram. Registers both at the frame end and at the mass end. So there are eight registers, two here at the frame end, two here in the frame end and two here at the mass end, two here. So four registers which are near the frame and four registers near the mass, poop mass. Why they are there? Because from this analysis of stress or strain, it can be shown that at the where the beam starts at the frame end and at the mass end, the stiffness is maximum. The strain is maximum. So what will happen if you make if you just deposit a device which can sense the strain? Then and in one side, then you cannot make it at the center. Only at the two ends, and two ends, the nature of strain you can see the diagram is just the opposite. You just see here the nature of the strain in like this, in this other side, it can be easily visualized. If you bend it like this, there is an expansion in the top and constriction in the middle. Like this, just the opposite. Same thing happens here. When you suspend this, then. Here there will be some little bit expansion and there will be little bit compression. And as a result, if you have eight registers made and they are configured in a bridge, Wheatstone bridge in such a way that there is some cancellation, you know, that when it is not subjected to anything, all the registers are equal. When there is no pressure or nothing is there, all the registers are equal. And Houston Bridge is configured in such a way, bridge is balanced out. But, sorry, I have another two minutes only. Uh, but if you now accelerate the device, that means if you mount it on the frame is mounted on a vehicle, which is accelerated, getting accelerated, then the idler, the Proof mass will try to sit idle because of the inertia. So there will be a, it will be, it will look like this. So there will be strain developed on the beams and as a result, the Houston beach will be disbalanced. The null position which was created earlier would be totally deviated. You can get an output now which is more or less proportional to the acceleration. It can be shown. That was the basic thing. On this particular principle, we developed various MEMS accelerometer structures in the lab and we modified it. Ultimately, one factor is very important, that is the sensitivity. The other is called off-axis off -axis sensitivity or off-axis detection. And we worked out on it and we developed some products for the national development program. And I think about two, three years back, a student also, Abhavisham, got worked on it. And it was going on. Let us not go into the detail of that. We have all facilities for simulation here, as well as fabrication. I will show you some very interesting things. We have also worked on quartz, mentioned about quartz microstructure. These are typical double ended tuning fork we developed for. These also as acceleration sensor, acceleration sensor. We developed for uh, what is called IISU, ISO inertial, ISO inertial systems unit. And it worked and it gave good name for us in the initially. And DET electric fabrication, so Das did it fully. In fact, he was my student, PhD student. He did fantastic work, dev development work on this. So we are not going into the details. Maybe Shomen will give you some time. But here, before that, for defense, we developed a dual tuning fork gyro chip. Again, made from silicon, from quartz. But this work is half complete because of lack of interest on the other side. We did not have the facility for testing. But we made the structure. 
I can show you the, some structure. This is the typical actual photograph of double-ended tuning for developed in the lab for defense. So I complete, I do not wish to be drag on because this is a huge, this one another picture, let me tell you. This is something <coughs> developed in the lab, in all labs, called thermal detector. This is based on thermopile principle. If you have a number of thermocouples connected in series, sensitivity increases. In the thermocouples, hot end is located on the membrane and cold ends are located on the remaining side area. A small infrared energy falling on the membrane region increases rapidly because of the extremely small thermal mass. We developed this in the lab using polysilicon aluminum thermopile structure under an MTEC unit. So many other things are there. Let me stop here. I think. Let me conclude. So we have quickly glanced through the mother of MEMS and various other subsequent technologies which came up after microelectronics. The basic, the mother being microelectronics, I have given 50% time. Now we have seen how the typical microstructures in electronics, they tended toward the narrow structure. This is a huge development. It is a huge, huge dynamic development. And second is MEMS. MEMS, let me tell you, today MEMS structures are also going nano. That is a high-end MEMS. And you have heart AFM, atomic pulse microscope. Do you know how it is detected? By a cantilever. So cantilever, you do not know how many. There are hundreds of applications in bio area where cantilever is used. It is a fantastic small thing, which is otherwise the cantilever is cantilever, mechanically. Bridge, big cantilever, aura bridge. That is a different issue. But in a bigger diameter, universe, one side in the universe, explode the outside solar system, huge thing. The other side, it go to smaller and smaller. Nuclear things were done earlier. But intermediately, outside nuclear, smaller things, in that happened during last 10, 20, 15 years in the nano area. So our electronics, is going towards nano and including memes also. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful, informative uh, introductory uh, talk on our workshop. Uh, now, I would like to ask Professor Soman Das to kindly hand over a small moment to sir. Small change in the schedule. We have our next talk by Professor M. M. Nayak on packaging of MEMS devices. Yeah. 
again good morning to respected uh, professor lahiri sir made my life very simple now because complete background the history of uh, microelectronics mems and also how informative and how educative it is i think you understood as a student so i i also become a student i heard and it was very systematically explained and uh, i think you know how it evolution taken place from a silicon in 1950s and earlier even today what happened he has given the complete uh, history as on today so that makes uh, uh, my uh, whatever i going to i am going to talk is very simple and also the packaging as he has explained the anodic bonding the eutectic bonding and uh, the fusion bonding and the addition bonding which i need not cover because he has given uh, in a glimpse all the four and what is the temperatures it covers and all so i can save some time in that also and very systematic because his experience and my experience lot of difference i am a basically a scientist and become a professor only uh, one year one and a half years back so how he actually teaches i very happy to see first time uh, even though i had contact with him i heard a lot of technical uh, talks but the as a teacher how he teaches really fantastic so thank you sir so i am be covering the mems packaging but now the packaging our people may not like that's why the americans coined it as a integration as on today they take they call it as a system integration so i put both the system integration and mems packaging and over you i'll be taking uh, most of the examples and also showing you some of the animations so that you'll understand how the packaging is done of these uh, let it be a cantilever or a diaphragm or uh, a hanging structure how it is connected just i'll be going to show you to, to measure the resistance or measure its capacitance or impedance whatever it may be how you external world you connect that's the thing and but before, before that we should know what is packaging so you see the nature you we learn from you know the nature mimicking the nature see a bird how the bird is packaged how is feathers and how is the bee uh, and the, how is the total structure as a bird just imagine a fish in water how it is packaged always it has survived in the water this is a, in all the atmospheric uh, harsh conditions a polar bear or some animal how is the package you see a human being a child for that matter a tree and a tender coconut is if you really look into it's really a wonder and you see here a human being if you see the nervous system the bone structure the overall body how so the package just imagine if in some eyes are here if the back side what happens is a head here if in the leg there's a head and legs are on the your head what happens if you interchange some of the organs and see how it may look like and even uh, is the science fiction you can even write a science fiction on that so i don't want to explain because most of you know packaging means what and why it is required and but specifically for uh, me to explain you the packaging part of it i am going to give you some introduction on packaging and three levels of packaging normally it is three levels of packaging and for aerospace packaging we are going for four levels that also i'll be just showing you the process flow a brief process flow materials for packaging during the course of my talk i'll be covering the materials for packaging what are the materials used infrastructure required like wire bonding anodic bonding has explained and eutectic bonding and all the wire bonding die attached and all for the equipment and maybe some animation on that and 3d packaging at present because you they are very young you will be not seeing the uh, 2d packaging uh, definitely will be going for seeing the 3d packaging so something on 3d packaging and what are the types of 3d packaging one case study we within the uh, stipulated time i have to give you one case study on transducers packaging requirement for various types is not only one type but how to have the requirement for various types and briefly the summary that's what i thought i'll cover now what is packaging you know so far it is called electronic packaging what is electronic packaging because if you say mems packaging it will be little confusing they thought it's electronic packaging at the heart of every electronic application you take your mobile phone for example you take this uh, laptop you take this a remote uh, uh, some device you take anything you take this projector you take camera how the packaging is done so this is invisible but indispensable so every, every heart of every electronic application you have this is almost invisible but indispensable 
you see that. Let me biomedical device, a catheter tip uh, camera, I will be showing you that. Everything is, you cannot see, but it's invisible, but indispensable. What is packaging? Assembly plus integration technology, that becomes simply the packaging. You assemble everything, take the leads out, and take connect, interconnect to the external world, that becomes a technology, uh, integration technology, and it becomes the electronic packaging. Many people are not at all giving any value for this, undervalued by many. Because we never give importance to our body. For example, if there's a pain in the leg, you know you have a leg. If you have stomach pain, then you know I have a, some problem in the stomach. If I have a head, headache, yes, I have a head. That's a headache. So, this is undervalued by many, just for uh, uh, understanding sake. But what is it and why? Why it is required? For example, I am holding this. If I simply PC, I can use a PCB and uh, click this happens. But if I hold a PCB, a bare PCB, with the components on that, what happens? There will be a short circuit, you may get a shock also, or there will be humidity problem. All this you know, even if I drop it may. Your mobile phone, how many times you dropped? Nothing happened to the mobile phone, isn't it? Even in rain, heavy rain, you will be riding your bike or something. It is completely wet, but still it works. So what is that makes it to work? If it's a bare PCB, whether it will be, it, whether it works? So it connects individual components. The first thing is it connects individual components. That by cantilever, that by diaphragm, or that fissure registers, or some capacitor plates, it interconnects and it individual individual components protects the component device. This is very important. Protects the component and device from damage due to handling. I'm handling this. Your mobile, you are handling. Everything, camera, you are handling. Everything you are handling. Even the laptop, you are handling. It is damage due to handling. You know how the keyboard, somebody will press like that, somebody will very smoothly, you operate with, somebody will get sound. You know that, even then it has to, in the, that is a harsh environment like, so you have to, so the damage due to handling, vibration, you may be going in a bike or car or cycle or something or carrying your bike, jumping or something, nothing should happen, human. Same thing for even vehicles like launch vehicle or a satellite or something, the vibration is very important factor. Shock, sudden drop, for example. Suddenly a bump in a road, shock happens, but your system, your mobile is in your pocket or it may be in your bag or something. So moisture, very important. It may be heavily raining or it's a moist condition, AC or non-AC. Reliably dissipate heat. Everything heats up because it's having a battery or supply, it heats up. How reliably you dissipate? Everything is covered under this uh, packaging. So what is packaging? That is protects the components from all this damage, vibration, shock moisture and to dissipate heat. That's why the packaging. Very, very important for <coughs> all this. Now, I will give one example. This is a one famous company, uh, Fraunhofer uh, at Germany, even integrates electrons into a golf ball. Can you tell me why a golf ball, one has to integrate the electronics, golf ball, and how harsh environment the golf ball, and what the golf ball does? Can anybody tell me? For example, he hits the hockey, that stick, a shock, no? then nothing should happen to that. There may be a camera, there may be audio sound recording by audio. It is having a sensor for range finding, or it is also sensed for angle, and also the altimeter, pressure sensor, all that, humidity sensor, everything. Now, the way they have integrated the electronic golf ball, when it hits, it should know what is the force, the shock it is imparting from the bat to the ball. Then it takes angle. What is the angle it moves? Is it 45 degrees, 30 degrees? What is the distance? It go on taking the photograph also and measure the distance. Measure the height. Takes the terrain photograph. Speed, the accelerometer, is acceleration. Everything, even it knows where the detection of where it is going to. And it takes the coordinates of that. That means like your GPS can give with respect to time. So when you can integrate a goal ball, just think. What are the requirement to integrate the electronics and MEMS device in a golf ball? So well packed electron devices continue to function reliably even in the harshest condition. The ball is going to be dropped, nothing should happen to that. It might have fallen from 100 feet, 200 feet. So modern packaging technology make developing smaller and smaller products possible. If I drop a big item from a height, some 100 or 10 feet or 20 feet, it may break. The small MEMS device, 1 mm by 1 mm or 2 mm by small device, if I drop, nothing happens to that. You'll be seeing that why. And the professor Larry also explained to you the scaling. But 
We are not able to go deep into that, but due to scaling, what advantage we get due to that. Then you have this, uh, the ICs, or this uh, particular von Hofer, processor IC is thinner than the sheet of paper. In your ATM card or your credit card, you are not seeing any IC or something. No battery there, but still it operates. How it operates? Your ATM card or credit card, some magnetic strip. So no battery is required. Only magnetic strip is there or something else is there inside? In your uh, smart identity card or something like that, something else is there? Any IC is there inside or something? Anybody can tell? Is it only magnetic card or something else? No. Something else is there. So, this particular company makes it as thin as paper or thinner than the paper so that for security purposes, if you give a document, I will know, yes, it is read by uh, Professor Somandas and how many pages he read and what he read and where it was, everything you can find out. That's how the latest technology. Because Professor Larry explained to you that what, where we are going in the MEMS. So, example, you have day-to-day -day example. You see, for electronic transmission, hearing aid can uh, fit discreetly and invisibly in the ear. You have seen uh, about 10 years back, how was the hearing aid? How it was? Big one. Then how, what it happened? Just uh, here only you will fix at the periphery, a small strip. Now you have one thing which is just put inside like a cotton uh, bud or something like that. Now you cannot even see. So the technology, how it is evolved and how you get now presently, you cannot see whether he is really wearing the hearing and including a battery you can put inside here. You cannot see. So he's a normal man. He's not having hearing aid, but he can listen. So if you have an acoustic microphone or there may be speaker, whatever it may be, is embedded with the battery, with the amplifier, with everything, whatever required. So that is the one thing which is commercially is now going, it is worldwide is available. Automotive packaging, without seeing you, you are the, I will be showing you one, of, one or two sensors on automotive packaging. You may think the autom auto automobile is simply a robust thing, but how much vibration? What is the, even in the Kashmir, Kargil or in uh, very hot places, it has to survive. So temperature condition, vibration condition, accident means shock conditions, everything there. So that automotive packaging, one example I am just giving you. Electronic component system can be shaped to suit any applications. It can suit any application. You want in this shape? Yes. You want in this laptop? Yes. Your laptop you want in some other? Yes. Everything you can shape it depending upon your requirement. That's what. Anyhow, this, there are a lot of things which you can imagine to have this. So the more a product electronics become indi indistinguishable from the product itself, so the more important scale, a ceiling and durability become means. For example, you see this, how it is packaged, light, but everything, a small wire and all. I can package this in a big way also, but not required. You want a sleek thing, so foldable sometimes. Put it in the pocket and go. Even helmet nowadays, foldable is available. They call it as a MEMS helmet. Now some research is going on that. Just I'm telling you, to make your life simple. So you know, single mobile phone, in olden days, mobile phone is only for phone. Now what are the uh, mobile phone, what are the things you can do? Is the mobile phone, yeah, or SMS you forget and photograph you forget. Other than that, what are things, GPS and other things? Yes. So many, isn't it? Everything is there in, in that now. So much of software and so much hardware and other things, how it happened. So everything is possible. So how you miniaturize things. So Moore's law and other things, you know that. Some more examples. Now if I have this thing and he's having a problem in the stomach, I cannot insert this. So you should have a catheter having a camera which is a small tip like a matchstick, you know, smaller than that. So you can have a camera less than the matchstick size, the head of the matchstick size, that is possible. So the, for medicine, the world's smallest micro camera for endoscopy and is one by one by one mm cube, only one millimeter, one millimeter, one millimeter. You cannot see that, smaller than that. And that is how it goes inside the catheter. You can take an intestine or your stomach or anywhere. And even you have a stent or heart surgery, they use this type of thing. So the packaging is the called the match stick tip sensor packaging. That's what is on stage. Just to give you the latest technology, which is actually again developed by Fraunhofer. And then lighting the high brightness LEDs. You have seen many of the vehicles, the high end vehicles in their uh, headlamp. You see the LEDs now, I think many of you have seen. Why LEDs? Why LEDs? Yeah, one is power, then what are things? Brightness, then yeah. all things is possible by this. 
how LEDs are formed, I don't want to go deep into the process of that. that. Automotive packaging for a position sensor used for ABS, ASPS, anything in the automobile, first it goes to automotive because it's a low mass production and low cost and then it goes to that. Then comes the power. You know we have to reduce the power. So testing and qualification of thick wire bonds in power electronics, yes, we use the packaging, how tech, technology different. Industry, for example, we have a rotating machinery. I want to know the pressure inside, the strain induced, the stress, the temperature, everything. But it's a rotating machinery. How you can get it? Everything is embedded in a, for example, there is a shaft and you have a veins, a blades, and you want to measure the strain, speed you want to measure, the pressure developed or cavitation you want to measure, you want to measure the temperature, anything you strain on each and every blades and uh, everything you want to measure at that. How you get out? You can't use the wires. Wire will twist, no? So you say RF or something, optical or RF like that. But your sensor should be so small, it's not induced some stress due to sensor itself. So everything is embedded in the shaft seal and how the sealing should be done and all those things and it works on high temperatures like 400, 500, 600 centigrade. Your sensor should withstand, the actuator should withstand, the electron should withstand. So how you package it? So shaft seal with the integrated energy sufficient sensors and see energy sufficient sensors for intelligence machinery. You cannot supply the energy from outside. You should have the uh, battery or whatever power, RF power or should be inside. Then security, integrating the ultra thin chips in the security documents. How you know that your document is not gone from here to Pakistan or some country? So can you embed these things inside? Can you do that? Yes. That is what is that? Now, if you are a laptop, if you are using, definitely even in America and US, they know that who is using, what is your password, everything is how it is it through the wired system. But can you have a system, the security system, which you can use for defense purpose? So that is what security, not necessarily defense for any purpose. So these are the things. I'm just giving an example. So any system you want to package, when you talk of microelectronics, or let me give an example of microelectronics, and MEMS you want to integrate, or you may have photonics or RF wireless, you want to integrate together, everything together. So we call this the microsystem technology together, microelectronics, MEMS, photonics, wireless, everything, microsystem technologies, then it becomes a device packaging and the system packaging together becomes. So, but still, how to interconnect this is important. I will be showing you some of the uh, uh, slides on this. Now, the totally when you integrate, because MEMS, as Professor rightly pointed out, it is not only sensors, it is not only actuators, not only electronics, total packaging, total structure, all together, MEMS, the, uh, the MEMS as a sensor, as an actuator, as electronics, microelectronics, whatever is being built, and the structure, total structure that becomes. So that together it becomes a system engineering. So that is what is the total packaging for MEMS with the electronics. Now, one example I want to give you, the three levels of packaging. So you have three levels. One is called die level, a device level, or a system level. What it means? You have a die, small die. For example, you have a, uh, we call uh, a silicon chip of making some hundreds of things on a four inch wafer or two inch wafer. You dice it, cut it, and have a single chip. If you have that single chip, on that you have only the sensing element, only the sensing element, it becomes only sensing element die. Now, you want to put on that, as the professor rightly mentioned, an activating link with some signal mapping or something, and it is a single die having a sensing element, maybe a cantilever, maybe to convert the fuser resistor into Wheatstone bridge and the electrical output, an amplifier, and an activating element maybe switch on and off or something like that. So all together in a single die, that is called level one. That is the die level pack. Everything on die level. It is interconnected through the aluminum uh, metallization, aluminum metallization, thin film deposition, or gold, whatever it may be. But it is a single die, everything it contains. That is called die level, level one. Now you want to connect that one with the signal conditioning. You want to amplify it for five volts, 10 volts, some, some other things, or you want to convert to ADC, analog to digital converter, or you want digital to analog converter, anything. You have one more die. You connect this die with this die, physically with the wires, maybe gold wires of 25 mil or something like that. That becomes device packaging level two. Then you want a substrate on that. You put this one, paste it there, or with the adhesive, you bond it. One more you have, you interconnect it. 
that becomes your level 2. Now, it is not sufficient. You have to connect some power supply to that. So, you have a power supply, you connect outside, some input action has to happen, some uh, output, it has to give some output. You connect a digital voltmeter or an oscilloscope or something, multimeter for example, you connect it and all this input action, everything what has pressure or acceleration or some physical phenomena which goes inside together, this becomes the system level packaging tree. That's what the normally, these are the three levels of microsimple packaging followed in MEMS. Just to give an example, one is a die level, one is a device level and then finally the system level, that is the total is the system level. That's what is the thing. Now, we will give, we will just see for a space separate, just because it is just continuing of one step further, we are continuing from the hierarchy of packaging for aerospace system. Why aerospace I am coming? Even today whatever you see, why it is rugged? Why these the technologies, you know, become miniaturized? First, either defense or space they think because we want to save uh, the cost of a fuel or the total rocket or launch vehicle system. We, if you reduce the size of a sensor or actuator or something, for every 1 kg we launch on a payload or a satellite, 1 ton, approximately 1 ton of the propellant we can save in the launch, 1 ton. So few crores of rupees we can save. So how to make it smaller, lighter and total size is smaller and better specifications. So, the system, the hierarchy, what is used for aerospace system packaging is like this. You have the level 0, we call it that level 1 you have seen, level 0. Here level 0, if you see here level 0, it is the intra device connections. I told you on a chip itself you interconnect, on a chip itself you interconnect, that becomes intra device. Maybe aluminum, aluminum pads you will be used and interconnect you use all that. Then you have level 1, they see this level 0 is nothing but this level 0, see L0 here put uh, is, this is a level 0, die level, this is a totally die level, so you can see the level 0. So, this is uh, nothing but this is itself is a die, this is a die, die, die. So, this is the level 0. Now, you connect the dies together, that will become level 1. So, intra package connections between this die, this die connect, intra package. So, it may be a single chip, but it is having so many functions, but you have to connect this chip with this chip some other chip. So, all this you connect it, then it becomes level 1 in this case. Then you have one more similar uh, uh, device here that you interconnect on a PCB or some other board that becomes your level 2. That is what we call level 2 is in, intra board connection. This is the board, on the board you interconnect, this is intra board connection. Now, between this board and one more board, maybe ADC board, power board or driver circuit or something like that, you interconnect that becomes level 3, intra box connections. So, this is the intra box connections. So, this is the platform and box to box you can have one more level 4. So, this is the system hierarchy of packaging for aerospace system. So, you have a single chip then that many chips are put in one uh, package then on a PCB or 2, 3 PCBs put together finally it goes to a satellite or a launch vehicle or any system. So, this is what is followed. Uh, very briefly, I am telling you about uh, this, but to make this, yes, it may take few months or uh, maybe uh, number of days. Now, this again, I am telling wafer level packaging is very nowadays. It is not that you package in the board level and all. When you want to give a 3D packaging or something, you can do it everything wafer level. That is why you are all the mobiles become so small and so many functions are happening. So, you go for the wafer, wafer level itself. So, you do everything in wafer level and you stack the wafers. I will be showing you some of the things how you do that. So, you do the highest integration density is possible with this. And it is a heterogeneous, it is not that homogeneous something. It is each is different, but you have one wafer, one more, one more like that. Many wafers you can have, but wafer to wafer connect, you should have a true silicon wafer. You should have holes like PCP, you have a PTH, is not it? Printer circuit board, you have the uh, printed through hole. So, you like that here, you can have a two silicon wires you can have in that. So, all processing steps are carried out at wafer level of actual front end processes have been completed. So, that means all process steps are carried out at wafer level of actual front end processes have been completed. There is one, one level. Then, the lateral width is almost identical to the chip dimensions. I will be showing you one example. The lateral width almost identical to the chip dimensions. So, as I explained to you, even the lateral dimension and vertical dimension, how it is very close at present. Example is here. 
the wafer system everything in between so the active that be a transistor or diode or something and passive components are also in, included in the wafer interlayers it can be one is only active one by passive or passive and active together everything put together you have that so higher integration densities are possible possible here and that is mainly due to 3d integration using tsv that is through silicon wires through wires only you can interconnect it and then it's possible example i have given here see a uh, gold and uh, tin you have a, a bump to galvanic arsenide wafer pitch is 55 micron and diameter 35 micron and height is 35 micron you see this diameter 35 horizontally height is also 30 microns almost same only lateral and this direction same only that means possible to have it's not necessary to like a building you build vertically like that but you have more same distance you can use for the both horizontally and vertically possible so this is an example of a bump uh, bump galvanic arsenide wafer with the 55 micron uh, pitch as well as uh, diameter 35 micron height is 30. so pitch between this and this will be 55 microns diameter of this itself is uh, 35 micron height also 30 microns that's what it's only just to give an example of a passive so this is a uh, one uh, example and the process is uh, a standard process so normally depending upon requirement the overall process same but which you want you can select the process so you start with the design because everything when you want the lead to take out you have to design the is not that you design your uh, cantilever or uh, diaphragm and put the pad somewhere it's very difficult to characterize so plan in advance where to put your pads because you have to take out or you have to probe uh, with the dc station and see what is the output what is the resistance change what is the impedance change or what is iv characteristics and all that so you can you design your uh, chip beginning itself thinking that okay my pad should not be at the center at the corner so i can take leads easily you will see that some of things so you have a design itself so various assembly and connection technologies on a multi functional board you have a design simulation redistribution once you simulate you think no 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 i should not have a candle here why it should be like somewhere here and my uh, pad may be here like this so you re redistribute depending upon the sorry de depending on the requirement you redistribute integration of passives is very important because you may not know now which you are using for rf memes and other things high frequency uh, or some you are using for uh, some uh, high frequency or low frequency measurement you may have the noise maybe there is a uh, what capacitance you call it as inter no huh? inter electro capacitance then there is so much of why noise can come in any of our device or some other things because all we are talking millivolts or small volts uh, less uh, maybe ranges of less than 3 volts what are the things inter electro then most of the electronics what are the other things what may happen some scooter is running there or some generator or the fan is running and it will pick up so interference yes, electromagnetic interference can be there so how to avoid interference okay so you de design your passive such a way that yes you can avoid all that and you can have depending upon requirement you can have silicon wires then thin uh, this thin chip embedding you can do it bumping you can do singulation i'll be showing you some more things so bumping you do singulation you do means take it separate because you know the by dicing embed then chip interconnection you can make chip to chip what i shown you between chip to chip interconnection finally you have to assemble it encapsulate it because the assembly itself is not sufficient the wire are, wires and are exposed the gold wire or aluminum wires are exposed so you have to put a potting compound on that so that it is not visible normally because humidity problem maybe when you apply pressure it may uh, you know disconnect from the because you have about 7 to 8 grams force only on these gold wires so you have that then you have a various maybe optional interconnections and then you qualify and test it see that whether it withstands your shock your vibration your testing environment or not you see that and finally you check for reliability you are doing one piece beautifully works you do one more piece is not working isn't it in the lab what happens you do for example thin film deposition you will be doing sputtering or something today you get 100 200 ohms tomorrow you do the same process same person same can you get a 200 ohms no not neither you are not getting you will tell you will blame for the machine or something like that why you are not getting can you have a repeatable all that can be have repeatable today i am getting 100 ohms tomorrow was 100 to, day after tomorrow and somebody else also does can you parameters all the parameters can you standardize and see that yes the machine is okay operator okay my parameters okay can i get it so that is very very important so see that the reliability is important so that the repeatability is there on that 
then only the product integration takes place. If it is not reliable, no use. Today my uh, laptop is working beautifully. Tomorrow it is not showing this. Instead of design, it may show some other things. Instead of or it is old type shows. What is the use? So no stability and repeatability. So can you have that? So that is what you have to see before you package it because packaging any MEMS device, device maybe 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 100 rupees you can make it. But the package cost 10 times or 20 times more. So 5% may be the basic device. 95% cost is for packaging. So you should be very careful to choose. You will be using gold wire, you will be using a header, glass to metal seals, I'll be showing you. Maybe very expensive things. So can you decide at this moment, can you, you have to use that or not? So those things. So of course, simulation and testing. Anyhow, you use uh, whatever the software you have. Combined stress testing, vibration, moisture, temperature, whatever you want, aging and other things. So test it. Thermo mechanical simulation you can do. Even if it's a TSU wire, what happens to wire? As so a temperature is the increases or decreases, like a door. In the winter, how the door will be, and summer, how is the door? Yes, it opens. That's just so big, and which is a bulk. So you will be seeing that. But a small device, what happens to, to temperature? 200 degrees, 300 degrees when it goes. Uh, the wafer experience at 200 degrees, what happens to wire diameter? Whether there will be open circuit because the gold wire or gold uh, leads are going there or it may be gold coated, whether it peels off at that temperature, low temperature, it may be minus 40, minus 60, what happens to that? It compresses, whether it collapses, all that. Then you see the all the thermomechanical simulation also you do it. And then only, you yes, it's going to withstand all that, then you can go for packaging. That means the co-design is important. That means when you plan your device, plan how you are going to take the lead out. Can you have a test structures in that? You have a cantilever, no doubt. You have a fissure register on that. Can you have a fissure register also outside? This is cantilever is here. But can you have one more similar register on the your uh, hard surface someplace? Can you see what is the resistance change due to temperature of this and this? Why it changes? Temperature coefficient of expansion, you will see. And you see all the uh, maybe vibration, shock, whatever the interference happens, can you see that? So you do that co-design, that's what it is written here. Highly integrated, that's a system design, highly integrated system design can no longer be carried out independently of technology. And technology development cannot take place without considering electrical behavior. The term co-design is used to design this synergetic approach to technology and design. So, and you design anything like our body. How would the head, the head, the inside brain and the eyes, ears and all design and how it is interconnected. Just think of that. Can you do that? That's what I want to just give you. That's why background I gave you that. Now, use anything, modeling, simulation, analysis, all the things you use our mind together for the innovative electrical measurement. Use anything. First you do this analysis, do the simulation, do the modeling, everything. Then you take then can you do some R&D and see that, yes, you are going to eliminate or reduce the effect of electromagnetic interference, RF issues, all this effect, so design that. So that is what the subsequent connection to the incorporated system is also integrated in the design. So you any design, if you see, all the, you can see even the present ICs, if you open, you see all the pads outside, not in the center. So well designed, it's Intel, for example, you see any Intel core, Intel thing, you see how the pads have designed it all, just think how it is designed, why it is designed. Example, for wire bonding, we use normally, it's called ball bonding, we also have wedge bonding, and uh, for dye bonding, we use the reflow in air in some cases. All these are ultrasonic bonding uh, techniques, uh, thermosonic bending techniques. You can see that it uh, bonds the wire from one place to other place. You may have a pad that one at the outside here, it bonds there, a one mil wire, for example. One mil is 25 micron wire, it bonds, a gold wire or aluminum wire, it bonds. Anywhere sometimes it will be 33 microns bonds and the strength of this should be around 7 to 8 grams normally. Some of the application we want 10 to 20 grams and the professor Larry knows that because for aerospace application we put not one bond, we may put two or three for redundancy, one breaks out. So what happens in a satellite if there is an open circuit? You will lose everything. In a vehicle when you go, if something a problem is there, yeah, somebody can come and repair it, but there is nobody to repair. So you do that. Now you see this. Uh, uh, reflow, this is one more uh, ultrasonic wire, uh, wire bonding technique, where you bond automatically, you, once you know the pitch and once you know the distance, you can like a CNC 
computer uh, numerical uh, control system, you can simply give the instruction which simply bonds between two pads or three pads. Depending upon requirement, you can do that. So then you have a wedge bonding. You want more strength for your bonding. You have a wedge bonding here. So that also we'll be seeing. This is a wedge bonding. Where is more strength? You want to about 20 grams, 30 grams weight. When you pull also, nothing should come out. So you have this. Uh, uh, this is. You have a wedge bonding technique. Just to give you an idea to that. And uh, I have a lot of YouTube things, but I don't want to show because it may take a lot of time for you to see that. And I think you, I don't know, you have seen the dye bonding. How we bond the dye. So the dye is attached depending upon the requirement. It looks simple. Putting an adhesive and uh, you no. Know, if the temperature expansion of a PCB or whatever you are bonding is different than this, it simply in low temperature can come out. So temperature that coefficient of expansion of this and this has to match. So you should choose a dye such a way that it is also having the same temperature coefficient. If it is a glass, what is the coefficient of expansion? If it is a metal, what is that? If it is a PCB, FR4, PCB, what is it? You have to select the thing. One is the temperature. Second thing is, is it you want thermally conductive or thermally insulating you want? Or electrically conductive or electric. You want thermally conductive, electrically insulating. Yes, you have to use similar place. There are some places you want thermally to have a good conductor between that. So these are the things what you have to see when you do the uh, selection for uh, your uh, thing. Now, let us take MEMS devices. You may have different MEMS devices. Here, for example, you have the uh, devices inside. So I have put some, uh, you know, for just to give an idea. You have a mechanical device, a cantilever, for example. How you operate from outside? Cantilever is fully packaged, but something has to act on that. Maybe bio, you want to use for uh, biological applications. Something sit on the atoms or your molecules or some biofluid has to sit on that. So you should have an opening for that. At the same time, you should not uh, deteriorate the functioning of this. Thing. So how you make that? Say cantilever may be outside. It may be displacement sensing or it may be vibration sensing or maybe how you can fit that. Or you may have a chemical, just a gas sensing. Maybe CO2 you want to sense, or you want to see methane, or you want to see hydrogen sensing, or you want to see some your uh, cooking gas sensing. So you want a window, but you have a mesh there, maybe a mesh like thing, so that chemical, how you package it. Then you may have a, a opto electronic or optical, so this thing, optical window. You have a transparent window, and whether it is you want, which way you want to connect that optical window, how you package it, that's important. Then microfluidic. You want to see the flow, blood flow, for example, or you want to flow of some liquids, or you want to see the density of a liquid, or you want to see the viscosity of the liquid, or you want to see the level of the liquid. How you interconnect it? So it's a microfluidic channel. Maybe somebody is covering in the microfluidics, so I'm not covering that, so fluidic channel. So you have to interconnect. Now the power you have to give, so how you get the, maybe 5 volts, maybe 10 volts or 20 volts, whatever it may be, the power you have to input. And the signal you have to get out, what is this? Is it, what is the lumens or what is the, optical uh, property, so you have to get an output. Thermal, heating or cooling, you want to measure the temperature, how you can get. So in uh, electron, if you see the IC, it's only electrical things are happening inside, they're completely encapsulated, only le leads are coming out in IC, any integrated circuit or any ASIC comes like that. Here is not like that. In MEMS, you have uh, some <coughs> for your physical phenomena to measure, to have an output, you should require some opening to the outside world. That's what I want to show. So for photonic, you want to have an opening. So this is how the package you have to think in advance. Whether you are going for only fluidic, or you want only the optical, or you want only chemical sensing or gas sensing, or you want mechanical sensing or thermal, microfluidic, anything. Can I design my header or my uh, package to suit these applications? That's one thing. Now, how to integrate? Yes, of course, you may have an IC, you may have a low noise amplifier, you have a driver amplifier, you may have a switch or mixer or a uh, preamplifier or uh, anything. So how you interconnect this is important. The so first part of thing with MEMS and other things, how you interconnect all this. It is not, I'm, it, just I'm showing you overall thing. It may not be for all the things. Some of the things only you may require. You may require a VCO or you may require a driver amplifier or something like that. Now you may have a thin actives, you have a passives, like filters, antenna, a waveguide, MEMS device, anything you can have, like RF MEMS you can have. Cables and connectors, anything you take, device, cable has to come. In the also, in this also cable will be there. Remove the interconnect. 
when you have a mobile phone, when you want to connect photos or download, the, you want a phone, isn't it? So everywhere you require cables. How you interconnect and which place? See nicely. I have put in your laptop, well designed, aesthetically. Where the USB port? Where is the power? Where is your this interconnection to the projectors? Everything is planned. If it is not planned, bottom side, bottom of the laptop, for example, you have this connectors. How? Oh. Or in the top on the top surface, if it is there, how you do it? So how you are planning it? Just think. So can you have those interconnections properly put? So system packaging we are talking about. Boards, which type of boards you have to use? Whether it goes to high temperature, is it okay? Or in low temperature, can I use FR4 or some uh, PCBs? Thermal structures, design, is it a plastic is sufficient? Here, okay, it is only ambient, plastic is sufficient. When you go to high temperature, low temperature, can I have that? Then power sources. How we are going to connect the power sources? It may be a small battery here, a big battery or RF source, whatever it may be. So total thing, when you think and put it in drawing board, it becomes a system package. That is the IC integration, system integration. That's what is very, very important. So I'll be giving you also some references who are interested in that. But commonly used here, many places, most of you are hearing of, it will be SOB package or SIP system in package or SOC system on chip or SOB system on board or MCM multi-chip module, PSV through silicon. All this as an electronic or a MEMS, you will be listening to that. Many people will be knowing what is SOP, what is SIP, what is, but we should know because we will be using as a MEMS or ASIC or IC, we will be using all these packages in our day to day life. When you make any MEMS device workable and you want to produce a device and you want to repeat it, yes. So we have a SOP system on package. We will be seeing that what is the system on package. Every system on the single package, how it will be done. System in package, what is the difference between a system on package and system in package? You will be seeing. System on chip, everything on a single chip, that will be seeing. System on board, like I shown you previously, on a board you have a lot of system, you will be seeing that. Multi-chip module, one module, but you have a multi-chip inside, and have that. Then through silicon wire, those things. So this is a through silicon wire. These are the various packages, what I am going to explain you. Uh, may not be uh, in very detail, but some of the things. So the current technology, as on today, what? Normally, let it be a Intel or let it be any IBM or something they use. The current system is a SOC, system on chip. Everything on a chip. So based on the complete system on one chip, so everything can be on one chip. Let it be your Intel core you talk or you talk anything. So what do you do? A complete system on a one chip. Then multi-chip model based on the interconnected components. You want a IO port or you want some serial interface, you want a parallel interface or you want something, RF interface. Then you have the multi-chip model. Then system in package based on the stacked chip stacking like a multi-story building. So stacked chip package. This is on a, like 3D package for uh, reduce the form factor. Real estate is very expensive, you know. In Delhi or uh, Calcutta, if you want to take a 20 meter by 10 meters or 25, how costly it is. So like that here also it cost will increase. So can you go vertically? So these are the things what you see this. And one example I want to give you. Because you have to see also know how these uh, all systems are integrated in a single chip. I want to give you a one commercial chip, ZMD31050, advanced differential sensor signal condition for either pressure or some of the Wheatstone bridge configuration, whatever you do, how one can interface a ZMD chip and what it contains. I want to give you a very briefly, I want to show you about this. So it is a, it is not for uh, advertisement or publicity, just I thought to make you an understand what are the things available in a, in a single ZMD? There are similar, uh, many chips are there, but I just thought a MEMS, when you interconnect, which chip normally a pressure sensor people they use. So CMOS integrated circuit for high amplification and sensor specific correction of bridge sensor signal. A bridge can be balanced or it is not balanced. Offset is there. How to make it an automatically the uh, zero balance or balance the bridge? How to compass for temperature? How to compass for excitation? How to compass it for the sensitivity? All that will be in that. So no external trimming components required. You need not put any resistor or any network outside. So how you can do it with the software technique? And it's called active composition. So PC control configuration and calibration via digital interface. So how it simple it is. And how accuracy you can attain, different accuracies at different temperatures, those things. So basically, I'm not going to go deep into, uh, going deep into this, uh, a chip, but just to give you an idea, 
So you have a, a resistive bridge network, maybe a pressure or maybe accelerometer or something like that. So you have a programmable gain amplifier. So whatever gain you want, you want only 5 volts, 4 volts, 3 volts, 2 volts, you can program that. You have multiplexer there, you can multiplex the temperature sensor with your uh, uh, pressure uh, sensor readings. You have analog to digital converter, you have prompts, you have CMC, you have a ROM, you have a digital, uh, dig digital to analog converter, you have pulse width modulation, C composition, you have a, what is that, a uh, serial interface, all the interface and everything you have. So you, everything is built in a single chip of maybe 5 mm by 6 mm or 6 mm by 7 mm by 7 mm, that's all, totally. So it's possible to have this. That means you can do anything. You want to 5 volts output you want or 1 atmosphere you want or 10 atmosphere you want. How you connect the fuser resistive bridge to that and automatically composite it for not only ambient conditions, I want PACA 0. This bridge, whatever you do, fuser resistors in processing, you may not get, say, for example, 1 kilo ohms you want each arm. Can you get in processing exactly 1 kilo ohm? You cannot get 1 kilo ohm. 1 may be 1.1, 1 may be 0 0.999 or something like that, it is not possible to get. That means when you excite the bridge, you may get some imbalance. So that offset, you have to composite it. Automatically you have to composite, number one. Due to temperature, when you increase the temperature, there is a possibility of change of the resistances or decrease of the resistance depending upon the temperature. Each resistor may vary differently, each resistor. So can you composite for that? Because you don't want output due to temperature, you want output due to the pressure only. So any other external harsh environment you have to avoid. I'll be showing you one slide on that. So can you do that? Yes, you can compensate for temperature because you measure, you have a temperature sensor, you measure the temperature, depending upon that, you give some input, you can compensate for that, possible. So when you compensate, as I already told you, there is a strain gauge. When you apply stress, there is a change in resistance. Apply strain, there is a change in resistance. Now the resistance change is there in the ambient condition. Due to temperature, this uh, element it may expand or contract. So what output you get is different. Can you compensate for that? So the temperature compensation due to zero offset, due to the sensitivity and due to the full scale, all things you can compensate using that. That means the gauge factor itself may change. For that all you can compensate using this one of the things. There is one more chip actually. What is that uh, is uh, max 1452 for maximum. One, four. one can use that also. So this technology already explained to you, so we, uh, we know from SSI, from GSI, the giga uh, uh, scale integration, we know uh, over 100 million uh, transistors, uh, equivalent gates are uh, now, uh, now presently available for supercomputer. And you know the typical number of IOs are more than 10,000. All this I need not uh, again repeat these things. But silicon wire, what the technology at present, use the MEM silicon fabrication process using the glass bonding technique by anodic bonding or uh, any type of bonding. You have a silicon uh, fabricated uh, device which you have to you have to package, sandwich into two silicon wafers and how the vias is uh, put in this, those things I want to just show you. So this is the process. I think uh, Professor uh, Soman Das will explain on uh, the silicon fabrication processes more on these details. So I don't want to go. but. It is possible to have thousands of devices. You want hermetical sealing? Yes. You want some uh, gas to be in, uh, incorporated in this nitrogen gas or argon gas? Yes, it is possible. And you can have optical hole you want or you want to ap apply a pressure here and you want to have a diaphragm? Yes. Or you want a gas sensor, you want a meshing here? That is possible. Anything. You want to have a cantilever? Yes. So anything is possible. How this silicon process, how you plan it for packaging that is important. Now, gyros, you know, again, Professor, uh, as explained to you about the how the gyros now for automotive even your uh, uh, the latest uh, Android or whatever your uh, things this gyro is incorporated so you know it's uh, uh, what is what are the uh, advantage of having this this is one of the automotive gyro of sensor knobs own product on the cars so again, this is one of the example of course the RF mems or again uh, the explanation is given so I need not go in that. This is important, very interesting and the smart dust, once uh, Professor TK uh, or Bhattacharya also was talking about this and uh, it is in uh, US, uh, you see Berkeley and JPL, that is a jet propulsion labs, how they did the initially the first uh, smart dust it is called or modes. So the network, a wireless network to measure maybe outside, you want to measure the temperature, you want to measure the humidity, you want the soil moisture, you want the wind velocity, you want wind direction, you want vibration, everything it measures and uh, 
best you will go, get in your um, like mobile phone by uh, wireless network. So it's a wireless network. Mainly at present they are using for all the automatic weather stations and also now used for many of the for nuclear plants and some of the hazardous places where you can use it. So these are the place where you want is a tiny device and it should be kept anywhere and it has to do all the jobs. Can you do that? Yes. Using the MEMS is very easy and now it has become very famous and in many of the go-downs and other things, many go-downs where you store a lot of items, you don't know where you stored. Now itself in our house we don't know where I have stored our item. So can you just see and get, yes, my item is on the fourth floor, third rack, second dryer, first thing. So you will get all information because you have an ID tag, RFID tag or something like that. Can you get that? The storage of lakhs and lakhs of items in one go down, can you identify? Now this technique has gone not only for that, any fire happens or something disaster, or a flood, the water is entering inside. Can you understand what is happening inside when you are not there, you are some far away? So all that now, this same technology is, you know, actually now gone to the deep into the things. So coming to the main thing is this uh, system on package, very important. What is essential? See, you may have a mixed signal, you may have a digital only or RS or optoelectronic, MEMS and BIO and NANO nowadays. So embedded actives, therefore all this you have to think when you design your system on package. You plan, not just simply think, okay, I'll do this, this and finally you think, oh, I've done some mistake. Or Can you think in beginning itself, is it a mixed signal or only digital or only RF or something? Based on that, can you decide the package what you want? Is a plastic package, a metal package you want or what package you want? So these are the some of the essential things what I wanted just to show you. But still, one should know the definition here. When you design the package, one should know what is the, the difference between multi-chip model and SIP. What is the SOC and SOB? What is the difference between that? We know that just it is a MCM is multi-chip module. Okay. Can I use a multi-chip module or SIP? That the doubt comes. Can you go for MCM or SOC? So how to how to define this? So this MCM is a package enabled integration. Package enabled integration. You see the wording package enabled and SIP also package enabled integration. But what is the difference between this and this? This is a 2D. So horizontal it is. Everything is horizontal. 2D. Two or more chips interconnected on a single carrier. Single carrier, one chip, one chip, two chip. So anything you can interconnect. That is the one. Together with the board, it forms a system. Whereas in this is also package enabled, but two or more is stacked. What is the stacking? Go one above the other. So it's a stacking. So that is the difference. And a required system board. You have a system board and you stack it, not horizontal. That is the difference between MCM and SIP. But now what is SOC? IC integration. Highly integrated and mixed signal ICs. So this is highly integrated and mixed signal. Partial system functions is one comp. See, this itself, SOC itself you can use as a single component. That's what we are going to. Then SOB, current approach to system assembly is this SOB, system on board. Discrete components assembled on a system board, a laptop, or you take your uh, uh, mobile phone. So normally they use this SOB technique because so many things are there. So each uh, manufacturer is different. You are maybe you are a sound uh, system or a mic or a speaker made by somebody or acoustic uh, sensor made by somebody, the, uh, the basic chip is somebody and IO is somebody. So you integrate. Then SOP, best of package and chip integration. It's best of package and chip integration. So this is micro miniaturized single package system with two or more embedded RFs and digital, analog, optical, everything put together. This is on the best package, chip integration. So these are the things what the basic definition of uh, the MCM, SIP, SOC, SOB, and SOP. So these are the things. The trends is not that we stop at SOC. What is the SOP? Then it's further it is the subdivided into the multi-technology, high performance, or efficient. So if you put SOC in MT, you want multi-technology, just yes, MT. You want high performance, you put just HP. So, so depending upon that, you have to choose your package. It's not that just high performance means not just uh, it is same uh, same uh, header or same uh, package. It's a little different. It is having higher cost and better uh, temperature uh, uh, variation, uh, better temperature withstanding capability, more strength and all that. Power efficient means yes, the dissipation is very good in that. So depending upon that, it is you have to select. So I'm not going deep into that because it goes deep into the packaging. So it will be, you know, a little bit boring subject if you go deep into only packaging. Now the challenges, 
to be addressed when you design any 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 mems and uh, integration or something so first you design verify test it and manufacturability is possible or not you can design anything recently we went to an sir np np mass project 1% designed one micron pillar and for 2 mm one micron silicon pillar or some pillar you want 2 mm or 3 mm is it possible physically to make one micron pillar at present technology to about 2 uh, to 3 mm is it possible <laughs> kundu is it possible to do why one uh, silicon no pillar ah it will be like that but he made all the ansi simulation comsol simulation everything i've done all the results people are all nodding head but i asked one question can you fabricate one micron pillar so like you know fabricating uh, your uh, 1 mm uh, some uh, it has to stand vertically some 10 meters 1 mm but 10 meters can any material you at present possible even nano materials cnt or graphene very difficult so it is very easy to design in uh, any software and your uh, tools but you have to see that manufacturer bit you see what facility is there in iit karakpur what facility is that uh, at uh, iisc iit bombay or iisc is it possible to do so manufacturer bit yes implemented yes no 1 mm no he is telling about 3 4 5 mm at present technology some yes yes it is possible but he, i am telling he is going to fabricate in some fabs you are telling within one month or so so that's what it is very difficult to do very difficult to do so imagine what is manufacturing thing available and how to do that those things then i pen legal see normally we copy it like i trip what do we do we take one paper based on that we do it you copy it no doubt but why not you use your innovations your thinking your change that some mindset don't only copy i triple paper or some sensor and actuator to copy and do it no so there will be ib and legal issues yield when you say manufacturability after doing you want 10 25 numbers you do but only one will working it's not good no at least 25 20 should work or 15 should work not all uh, you know only one is working out of 25 when you do devices so you see the yield how much it can yield from the whatever you designed whether it gives a yield or not final then development time and cost you have made beautiful design but it is 3 years to do, get it out and uh, cost is a uh, few lakhs not interested so you think all these challenges are well in advance so how to package everything you see so power management you have to see you have to see reduce noise margins noise very important you will be talking micro volts or milli volts or something but noise is more than milli volt or micro volt so how to avoid noise in the design itself you can have that grounding or you want earthing or grounding or guarding or what is that you have the so many things techniques to do that so how to do that shielding for example cross talk increase cross talk comprehensive system level simulation and simulation of digital analog interface this is important you simply don't only see your cantilever and diaphragm uh, or something and design see everything together with the interface and everything then you can you uh, simulate and check is it okay or not mask and tooling cost we always forget when say make okay my silicon is only 10 rupees and my over but what is the cost of mask mask is very expensive and what is the tooling cost making the mask and other tooling cost those things also take care of when you do it because you are all going to be you know engineers your phd's you want to do then you want to find out what is these things yield increase number of metal layers and random defects in metallization the always you have a problem when you have a increased number of metal layers when you make via or something like that you have the rejections are more than so you have to see that how to reduce the uh, defects and uh, get good yield then some common test bench infrastructure i don't want to wire it but i want to see on the uh, dc probe station or multimeter or your oscilloscope can i connect it to my small probe probe is only 1 mm by 1 mm but when i put my probe with the crocodile clip all that metallization will simply go away so can i have some structure can put a pcb and then connect it all plan in advance then it is possible to test your device and see that its performance this is the one thing then see the presently This is one of again taken from that uh, uh, Fraunhofer. If you see the biggest barrier, 
in a business challenge see you are more than 10 million dollars of investment so it takes more than 18 months to design and ramp up to get it 18 months it takes so see 10 millions and 18 months so market share should be for this at least 60 to 100 million even 10 million investment the market says if you know that's why the mobile market is coming up india is having i think next to china highest mobile phones even a beggar is having a mobile phone <laughs> he talks uh, i am here a lot of people are there in howrah uh, uh, railway station why not you also come beg so he will come so he said yes i have seen uh, in some places they will call their colleagues by mobile phone he comes and does uh, no you see even front maid or a carpenter or everybody is how useful is a milkman or something isn't it so it is the it is you, you may forget about a wife but you never forget your mobile isn't it you know so the mobile became a part and parcel of our body so that's what I'm doing. so unless that type of market is there that's why let be china or japan or us why they are jumping on india on the mobile market and how to make it so so not so many opportunities so india is not doing that but so just i am telling about this now we will go specifically for uh, 3d packaging what are the types of 3d packaging uh, we have just to, it is better to see some of the 3d packaging challenges and 3d packaging how it looks like at least you may not use or you may use future one or two people may uh, go to such industries and use it so how what is the 3d packaging and what is that i am giving an assortment of representative respected to 3d packaging approaches some of the things so you see this stacked packages when the simple pcbs you see your old pc you open it you see isn't it motherboard and uh, you have uh, inserted the uh, uh, your uh, various boards so yeah cars so that is a stacked packages low density and low technology old technology now you don't want that no you want now how flat is your uh, previously how was your monitor so big i have seen uh, many monitors in the same building is being discarded in the back side uh, big monitors but now how is the monitor size huh? so sleek so slim so beautiful so it is the so now this uh, is the old technology stacked but still it goes on the power devices this is the stacked packages low density and and low technology still required for some cases where the, is not very important then wire bonded and die stacking you see you wire bonded but stack the dies and wire bond to the other whatever you are interconnecting uh, board is there so you simply wire bond maybe 1 mil or 33 mil wire you wear gold wire or aluminum wire or now presently copper wire wire bonding using that machines what i shown you the bonding machines you have the wire bonding and die stacking so one more technology now you want uh, is not two i have 5 6 yes you can have a tower of hanoi means you can have a bigger one here lower one you have to design but think can i have a power here or power here you have to have power power supply board here because you have to dissipate more heat then your sensor module can be here so how to interconnect design in advance so that you know how to interconnect all these four five six boards in this way pyramid construction so can you do it this is a tower of hanoi so this is one thing i have given you references also here in the bottom you may not in this you know, reference uh, mems packaging by thai ransu given this i am uh, teaching to the phd student of institute one full semester all this but uh, i am uh, condensing everything in a uh, one hour one hour course so so staggered die so you can have a die staggered way and interconnect it this is also a technique of connecting the various uh, boards or the wafers this is one way of doing it then you have uh, folded day like a folded umbrella everybody wants less luggage isn't it so, so more economical and uh, less luggage more comfortable so you can have this one you can have folded thing like your fan or to use it uh, for this thing so you have here the you can fold like this like this you can even the double fold also you have notice so folded day this is also being used at present many many applications specifically for space application where you have uh, sold our uh, uh, solar Uh, cells how it is actually opening closing and all that so that is possible to do on the solar cell and other things so there is a folded die is like that so they can have and you can have any type of and any number of uh, dies interconnected with the folded die this is one more technique these are 3d packaging this is 3d three dimensional packaging like you have underground parking now your vehicle will be you know on not your visibility goes underground and you can park it similarly you can have all these mezzanine uh, 
multi chip modules all things are parked one below the other like that you can have this type of uh, assembly depending upon the requirement depending upon the uh, density what you want yes but power you have to consider how the heat dissipation and other things is there one more this is a low profile pattern overlay so you can have uh, not necessarily wire bonding everywhere you can have uh, your pattern and the, the metallization itself it can be like that and like motherboard you have a connector you can have similarly in this it can be stacked like that only wherever you require only those things can be interconnected either this way or this way or both ways it's possible to interconnect so the low profile pattern overlaid this is one more technique just giving you an idea what are the 3d packages available like building a multi story building so how to do that that's uh, some of the uh, techniques not that everything is available everywhere but wherever is required we should have so then you have the like a book you have a uh, many pages in the book and you have to interconnect them yes that is what is the, the stacked pattern die frame so you have a like a book and every you want to first and second second and third third and fifth anything you can interconnect both sides that side or this side normally on one sided so it is not necessary that you have to everything you connect only these two maybe you want to connect or so first and last power you want for everywhere yeah, you can and here 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 all that don't want power only you want only the signal only wherever you want and amplify so these are the things possible the stacked pattern die frame this is one more technique of uh, this is a monolithic wafer stack where the tsv that through silicon wire used so use the wafers and that you interconnect that is the latest technology what people use for monolithic, monolithic wafer stack they use it and they connect it interconnect and you get a very high density and good efficiency and high reliability and low cost that's what the latest so of course all these stacked pad overlay mcm everything looks like that is interconnected in different different layers and each layer is also depending upon the requirement it's interconnected you can see here how it is interconnected this layer this layer this layer and only these two layers how it is interconnected you can see that so all this is possible in 3d packaging approach that's what so i have explained you very briefly the this type all these are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 types of 10 types of, uh, ten types of packaging 3d packaging approaches assortment of so these are different of course the combination of these also possible you combine this and this combine this and this combine this that is also possible but these are what are the basic things available and uh, this they normally use for high density packaging high density high density packaging and for low density packaging one can go for these things just to give an uh, idea of uh, three levels of packaging now one uh, example i want to give you so just to make you more understand on a specific things a sensor what is a sensor every one of you know what is a sensor on a transistor one formator can i call this converts electricity into light can i call it as a transistor or fan converts electricity into mechanical can i call what is the sensor measurement yes what you want is a physically you want to measure something physically physical so measure an input you give and you want a output electrical output why electrical output why electrical why not mechanical why not chemical yes exactly you can have a indication you can have recording you can have measurement accurate measure you can have control like ac it controls the temperature it controls the see it is nicely controlling this temperature to say 25 24 degrees it measures the temperature gives the indication to the compressor to switch on the compressor to make it still cooler or not and switch off if it's a uh, over cooled or switch on the heater depending on the requirement so you have a sensor you have actuator and everything so the sensor mainly used for this purpose and some of thing requires excitation or no you know the passive and active i am not going to that sensors now i am not talking about a simple sensor but the sensor should withstand all the harsh environment whenever you do whatever you do a sensor not just a sensor it will be in lab it's okay but sometimes these sensor for example we will take a pressure sensor which which has to measure the fuel or oxidizer of very acid or alkali or some natural gas and all your uh, chip uh, silicon chip has to withstand all the uh, acidic uh, thing you have a, that silicon is there and it may etch out you have a metal on that maybe aluminum or gold so wires are there come out there is an epoxy which is bonded something come. so can you how you how you isolate from this So that is one thing second output you are getting when you get output how you take it out is important but 
that output may vary not only due to pressure, due to radiation. It may be solar radiation, gamma radiation, nuclear radiation. Due to radiation also that may be positive. Of. Then acoustic, somebody is talking. It's a pressure sensor. Our, what is our SP, uh, sound level? That also a pressure. So that also may vary. So can you, I don't want, I have to reject this acoustic noise, only I have to measure this pressure. How to do that? Temperature. Temperature increases, decreases, you don't know. Today temperature is 33 or 34 degrees at the Karakpur. But when I take the sensor to uh, Kashmir, where it's 0 degree or uh, minus some temperature, it has to behave the same way. But due to temperature, there may be expansion, contraction of the resistors or something is happening. Some, some other output should give. How to compress our temperature? Vibration. Due to vibration, NIV is a fuser resistor. Anything you vibrate, it will give an output. Due to vibration, also I may get an output. So how to eliminate that, which I don't want? It's the interference. Mechanical shock, while it is simply hitting, anything may change output. How to do that? Impact, what hammer effect, anything. Vacuum. I have used the sensor here, very beautiful works. I put in a vacuum chamber. You are uh, maybe sputtering in it or vacuum evaporation or some vacuum chamber I put. It is not functioning. You will tell it is not functioning. How to make it to function? And noise, EMI, EMC, everything. There will be pump is running, rotary pump, diffusion pump is running. Turbo molecular pump is running, some pump is running, some machines are on, so many things are on. It gives some output. I don't want that. How to avoid that? Humidity, a humid atmosphere, or it is a, some, uh, there is a thermal shock. So many things. It may, I want to use underwater, I want a deep space or planet. Smoke is there, lightning is happening, thunder, earthquake, solar wind. So many unwanted things are happening. Still it has to function. How to package it is important. So can you take care of? All this, you eliminate all this, only the auto package is important. Just to give an example of one sensor for space application, I want to give you. But the pressure, when you say pressure, measurement of pressure itself is important. What is the atmospheric pressure in the Karakpur? Somebody can tell me. What is the atmospheric pressure in the Karakpur? Huh? Approximately. Karakpur uh, atmospheric pressure. No. Approximately. Okay, what is the normal pressure in anywhere? Huh? One bar. What is one bar means what? How many millimeters of mercury? Okay. You are very close. 760 millimeters of mercury equal to one atmosphere. 760 equal to one atmosphere. One bar equal to 750. You should know precisely 750. 10 to the power 5 pascals. So, even the 10 mm counts, one bar equal to 750 millimeters of mercury. One atmosphere 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so one bar equal to 10 to the power 5 pascals, 10 to the power 5 pascals, 1 followed by 5 zeros, pascals. So now you have a vacuum, reference vacuum, thinking it is a pakka zero. With respect to that, I want to measure the pressure P1. Whatever you want to measure the P1 with respect to atmosphere, now a vacuum, we call it absolute pressure measurement. You want to measure the same pressure with respect to atmosphere, 760 millimeter, one atmosphere, 760 millimeter, with that, you call it gauge pressure or relative pressure. And you don't want both. You want, I have P1 and P2. Your height is uh, 5 feet 6 inch, 5 feet 7 inch. I want the difference only, not your, not his. The differential pressure, what you want to measure P1, that is called differential pressure measurement. Now, I don't want this. With respect to you, I want some other persons. So you are a reference. With respect to that, I want to measure some other P3 reference. That means we have three or four types of measurement. One with respect to vacuum, you make a vacuum, apply the pressure, whatever pressure you measure with respect to vacuum is called absolute pressure measurement. Not that. You want an atmosphere, your blood pressure. What is our blood pressure? A normal human being, diastolic and systolic blood pressure. What is the blood pressure? 120 by 80. That's exactly correct. 120 by 80. What is 120? What is 80? What is the unit you didn't tell me? Huh? Yeah, but what is the unit of the measurement? Millimeters of mercury, yes. 120 by 80. Is it an absolute or relative or gauge pressure or differential pressure? What is that? Huh? Relative, yes. Yeah, exactly. It is with respect to atmosphere. Because our body, when you, there is a cut, it oozes out the blood. It won't go inside, no? So it is definitely with respect to atmosphere is a higher pressure. 120 or 80, that's systolic is more than the atmosphere. So that is the gauge pressure or relative pressure. Yes, you are correct. So we want to measure that. That is whatever you use for that measurement is a relative or gauge pressure measurement. 
Now, the reference, I want a reference. With reference to that, I want to measure pressure. That is called reference to pressure. I don't want both. I want to measure between P1 and P2 only the difference, like height difference. That is called the differential. Packaging, why I am explaining here, not because of pressure. The packaging for this, packaging for this, packaging for everything is different packaging. Simply you are going to see that, some animation, how it is different. So we may say I have made a pressure sensor, but is it absolute? I don't know. Is it a uh, gauge? I don't know. Is it differential? Is it a, so by this, so you are going one step for your own, whatever you do, I am telling you, go deep into that, see that whether it is works good. Now this is the technique what you use. These are the sensors used for space applications. We have all different type of pressure sensors, what you see, for a launch vehicle like PSLV recently launched on uh, Monday night. So we use our this type of sensors, about 120, 130 numbers of pressure sensors for each launch vehicle. Each weighs about 100 grams. So you think 100 sensors of 100, uh, 100 sensors of 100 grams, you think 100 into 100, how many kgs you get it? Hmm? So, 1000 or so, no, 1000, 10,000, how many kgs? 10 kgs. 10 kg. If I make same thing in the sensor using the silicon, I can make in 10 grams. So, 10 kg, if I make it 1 kg, I can, uh, my propellant also I can reduce, means the loading of the propellant, nearly a ton or half a ton or something. 1000, uh, uh, some crore rupees also we can save with the propellant. And also, light, vehicle can carry something more uh, payload. This is only one example I am giving you, just an example. So like that you have to reduce the sensor dimensions, sensor weight, you can re really reduce the launch cost also. And also the cost of the sensor because of mass production. Okay, when you talk of a sensor and your packaging, I want to tell you one thing. It is not just measurement of pressure and your composite for temperature and all. By chance, a person takes the sensor or to the launch anywhere and it goes like that with the wire. So if wire cuts, one case, so you have to see that even by chance, one wire goes out, you should have a redundant. Now, by chance, a person when he connected, the output of the sensor, he connected to the power supply. And the power supply, whatever the output has to come, he has connected to the power supply. And the power supply thing is connected to DVM. What will happen? If you connect your uh, laptop, wherever the power, connect somewhere, and so what, what may happen? Huh? There is short circuit, something will happen, output you are connecting to a power supply. What will happen? Output of amplifier, you are connecting to power supply. So it will go. You interchange the power supply, positive, negative, in so that you interchange. Laptop you are very specific, you connect that, uh, uh, it is always positive, it is positive, it is protected. Now you simply interchange, what may happen? What may happen? Interchange the power supply, what happens? <laughs> Out, no, all ICs. I see any IC you take 741 or OPO7 interchange of plus minus 15 volts, what will happen? It will work or no? It won't work. Okay. Now you have to protect it. That means you have reverse polarity protection. Even by chance you interconnect, nothing should happen to the sensor. So you have a packaging you have to think of. Can I put a diode in the series? Yes. It is protecting the sensor. Because you are, it is a, you know high cost when you package it. So you have to protect that. When I short circuit the output, nothing should happen. Can you protect it? Possible, no? You have fold back protection, you have so many protection you have studied, possible to do. Can you do that? Now, the person, when you want to test that, he takes the sensor and uh, hits it when he wants hit it somewhere. Because he want to have equivalent screw or something is not going, so if, for example, he hit it. So this may damage. So by that impact also should not damage. We are not telling you hit with the sensor, but I am telling you, so by mistake, something happens falls or somebody hits, nothing should happen. So all these packaging, you have to think in handling, in packaging, short circuit, open circuit, EMI, EMC, all it takes. So these sensors, what you are seeing, one sensor, what is going for our, uh, uh, mainly the space mission, like even in Mars mission or Chandrayaan mission, this type of sensor, is having all that protection. Short circuit, nothing should happen. If it's uh, by chance, you interchange the polarity, nothing should happen. By chance, it falls, it has tested for vibration, shock, humidity, temperature and all that, minus 40 to plus 120, it tested for uh, various uh, vibration levels up to 13.5 G, random vibration and all that. That's why the packaging has to take care of. And whatever you see here is the conventional sense. What you have seen, this is for, which is going for a satellite. 
this is going for launch vehicles called differential sensor which measures the difference between two pressures. You have a sensor, I told you 100 grams, it's called a 21 NA type. For absolute measurement, this is what, uh, around 100 boost in each launch vehicle. You have one atmosphere to four, 330 atmosphere, different ranges. You have a level sensor, ultrasonic level sensor, wherein it measures the measures it stops at a particular level, predetermined level and gives a signal that yes, it is now it is full and you can switch off, it switches off. So you have a ultrasonic level sensors, not one, you should have two, by chance one fails, in even that case one fails, you should have one more, so you have this one. You have a temperature sensors, various temperature sensors, you have a flash down sensor for our space capsule recovery experiment, when it simply touches the water, the flotation system has to op operate and uh, you have to lift the satellite system and uh, whatever zero gravity experiment, micro gravity experiment, some experiment did on the space you want to see. So for that you have flotation, uh, you have to see that the flash down sensor works. Hydrogen depletion sensor, in any vehicle, if hydrogen depletes first, there may be disaster. You don't want, like a fuel in your vehicle, when you go from here to Karakpo to maybe city or railway station, you have only quarter liter of uh, petrol in your car. Can you go to the city or Calcutta and come back? No. So you know, the, yes, I should have at least half a tank or full tank approximately. So the health monitoring of any vehicle is based on the propellant availability in the spacecraft or a launch vehicle. So that has to be determined. So in the one case, we have to see that whether really it is depleting or not. I will be showing you a small, maybe it is there, I will see. You can see that one, how the depletion works. Nothing but capacitance principle. If there is a dielectric R, you know, epsilon R is one, dielectric constant. If there is a liquid hydrogen is 1.2. Simply, if it is a liquid hydrogen, not that it becomes one, and we connect in parallel, we see that yes, there is a change in the dielectric constant, so capacitance change, and the liquid is not there. Switch off, something like that. If maybe there, I'll show you that if it is there. So then, a triple redundant level sense, uh, level sense. There's a cryogenic capacitance type, not one. One fails, one more. One more. Otherwise, all things you take the ca you take care of. So triple redundant. So so many sensors are there: pressure, temperature, and level, and uh, the pressure, when you reduce it to MEMS, it becomes only 10 to 15 grams. And the same specification or better than specification, but we have to see the reliability of that. So that's what even today, Russians or Americans, they use conventional technology because its heritage is there for 20, 30, 40 years. For MEMS, you have, yes, some test is going on. So we have to see that if it meets the complete reliability standards, then it goes. So when you go to MEMS, these are the MEMS devices. You have uh, the uh, MEMS, uh, uh, we stone bridge configuration on a diaphragm and if you make a small hole on that, it becomes a flow sensor. You can make it like a venturi or like you are a orifice, you can measure the flow in that. You put on a silicon with a silicon oxide or silicon nitride, have a platinum meandering path, then it becomes a temperature sensor. You have interdigital things you can measure for level sensing, density, viscosity sensing, of course you can, what you use for the accelerometer, similar structure one can use for the level sensing. Humidity sensing, I want to see humidity. We have a capacitor place in between some epoxy or some um, uh, polymide or something like that. If it adsorbs the humidity, it changes its dielectric constant and you get a change in the capacitance. You know the C equal to epsilon not epsilon R by D by A. So you know A by D. So you know how it comes. So that one can use it. Then depending upon the requirement, you know Kalpana Chawla, you have a Kalpana Chawla center. What happened is the disaster, how it happened? Anybody can tell? Kalpana Chola. <coughs> Astronaut, what happened? <coughs> well, re entry. What happened? Yes. Yes. No, stop working. The high temperature is given away because you have silica tiles like that. So there is a gap and other things. No? So if the temperature exceeded beyond a certain limit and the gap is there and that is not properly covered, there is a possibility of you know, going out. So can you detect such things in advance, not in the flight and all, in advance, take remedial actions. So in wind tunnel or shock tunnel, they put the sensors and this is an area of pressure sensors and then test in these uh, uh, nose cone or something like that, when you apply that re-entry conditions, what happens to the, even the small projections or there is a cavities, what happens to that? So can you take a remedial action? We want a fine surface there, should not be any, you know, so those things, yes, with the pressure studies, you can have an area of sensor because of MEMS. It's not possible conventional strain gauge you can put. If the sensor is only 1 mm by 1 mm and what we say gap is also in mm or micron, so you have to study that. For that also, you have. Uh,
things. So, these are the some of the sensors what is used for the space. Some package of using MEMS, you see how small it is, one can use for commercial application. The small sensor itself is the size is reduced. I forgot to bring otherwise I could have shown you, I could have brought us. these are the sensor on PCB. These are sensors what I told you going for uh, the satellites and with all the protection circuitry, even now they use it. It gives output of plus minus 5 volt uh, for excitation of a uh, plus minus 15 volts. And you have a MEM sensor, how small it is, you know, it is a, again uh, the, with the 5 volts you can get. What the Professor uh, uh, Lahiri has explained to you, it is not that MEMS, component of MEMS may not only the, the sensor, but sensor actuator with the signal transaction circuit is complete, it becomes micro system. And the present day, the power supply also goes inside, like a thin film battery or RF source goes inside. So it becomes the component of MEMS and the to total together, that's why MEMS, micro electromagnetic systems, right? micro sensors, micro electronics, actuator and structure together. You know that anything, any sensor or something like that, when you put on a header, we call this as a header because you have to interconnect it, you have a, a glass to metal ceiling, you will be seeing the next uh, slide uh, exactly how it looks like and we wire bond each point, maybe a Western bridge configuration, a open bridge, you wire bond it using a one mil wire and then take the leads other side and apply pressure on this side, how it looks like, you will be seeing that. We can't apply directly the pressure, so we use the stainless steel diaphragms of a different type depending upon the requirement, the low pressure, high pressure and all. So what you see in this case, this is the diaphragm of stainless steel of 304L or equivalent austenitic steel should withstand the corrosion or erosion of your liquids. So then we have to, like you so DRI, you go to deep reactor, so here you have, we go electron beam welding, the, the width to depth ratio is very, so depth you can go very high like 1 mm, 2 mm, whereas the width is only 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mm. You can go that by electron beam welding. And you see this, how is this being assembled? You can see here in one of the, uh, this uh, animation, each, uh, even though the MEM chip is only maybe less than 0.5 grams or so 500 milligrams, how it is each, uh, uh, the package cost increases. See, this is a simple chip, that's all. And it is bonded on, this is anodically bonded on a glass. And this, the chip will attach here and the gold wires will take. So you have a chip. You have some epoxy, you have a header with a glass to metal ceiling, this is a metal, this is a glass, specific metal called covar, covar, co-variable, means it should have the temperature coefficient of expansion equivalent to the glass and that's what you want to have, gold plated wires and then you have a chamber, stainless steel, a diaphragm and this together will be electron welded, you will be seeing animation and filling of the oil is done using a ball and screw mechanism. You see this in the next thing, how we do that actually. You have this header made up of a covar material and you have the glass and the wires after uh, the glass medicine will be gold plated. You have the die, the die attached using the adhesive like I told you, thermally conductive but electrically insulating, the wires wire bonded and you have a chamber this and on the chamber you put this uh, diaphragm and then go for a uh, cap and then weld it each joint. It become a hermetically sealed connector but inside you should have oil. How to fill the oil? Yes, you have this mechanism. You fill the oil, put a screw, a uh, ball and screw mechanism, tight it and if required you can weld it also. It becomes a fully hermetically sealed thing. Whatever, uh, you, whatever you wanted to measure the pressure, faithfully it acts on this diaphragm. We sing, uh, on this diaphragm, faithfully it acts on the diaphragm. That diaphragm transmits the pressure to the basic MEMS chip, thinner diaphragm and then you measure that. That's what the technique. So you know how the size is become so big. That's why 10, 20 grams. Even though 0.5 grams is this, but total thing becomes 20, 25 grams depending upon requirement. That's what I want to just to show you that. So these are all the techniques which used because uh, I have to cover some of the things. Humidity sensor, I have shown you the humidity sensor works uh, like a capacitance only and how you do it. So this is the processes, I think uh, Professor Samman Das may explain you the each and every process, not on humidity sensor, but normal processes, how uh, we are doing it. This is nothing but the, the electrodes are there and in between you have a polymer. So that's what we do that. So these are the uh, various processes which is there. And when you, when you subject it to various humidity levels and see the output when you convert using the capacitance converted into electric voltage, it may be nonlinear. 
you can convert to linear. You know, nowadays you know, linearization technique, you know, best fit straight line methods are there, curve fitting is there, you can make it straight. So all this output, what you get is raw output, you can convert into a linear output and you can have uh, humid sensing. Temperature sensing, yes, on a silicon, you can have a silicon nitrate or silicon oxide, over that you can have a mandarin pattern of platinum or titanium or some uh, depending upon the requirement, yes, platinum is there, for example. You want 100 ohms? Yes, you can make it 100 ohms. Photolithographic technique, you can ca calculate and measure, you know R equals rho L by A, you know that, isn't it? R equals rho L by A, rho you know, L you can decide, R you can modify, isn't it? Area and all that. So you can do that, rho L by A, using that you can uh, uh, 100 ohms, you want 200, that's what you call it, Tyler made films, 200 ohms, 1000 ohms, 2000 ohms, anything is possible, you can do that and you can have pads here and take the lead out. For redundancy, you have parts like that. Or four point measurements you want to do. Yes, you can have this four point measurement. You can have like this. So, this is how. Why platinum is used? I think most of you know. Why platinum? Temperature sensing, mostly used. Huh? Temperature question, yes, one is thing. 0 0.00385 ohms per ohms per dixon. What else? Bonding. Bonding is also okay. What is the expensive material? Huh? High sensitivity. Okay, sensitivity is also okay then. Corrosion product, correct. Then it's a noble metal, isn't it? So corrosion. Then what else? Very important stability. After 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, stable, nothing happens. You take copper, you take it also measures, but only one time. Oxide coating and other things, and it won't. So the platinum found to be the best because long term stability. Also, apart from other all whatever you told. So now we have other sensors with the silicon, you can have a Sun sensors, you can temperature sensors of and uh, this uh, surface across your magnetic field sensors, so many things and everything stacked you see. This is one of the East European Space Agency photograph uh, what are taken from the ESA. So you can see how it is stacked, wire technique is used and uh, multi-chip module is used and all the technique they used for uh, stacking the sensor, various sensors, not only one sensor, various sensors together and their present pressure sensor is like that for high pressure sensing, they use a different technique. They have, uh, uh, it looks like cantilever, but it's a uh, tubular structure wherein the strain gauges are outside. So this is what they use at present for a more stability. Vehicle, you know, many, many sensors are being used. You have seen many places, I think, even in the YouTube or in your uh, internet, seen a lot of uh, sensors. Let it be the identification of the, if somebody steals the car, identification, then Automatic toll connection, correct, even in Delhi they do know, but the vehicle can simply move, toll is cut from the credit card, isn't it? So that's the again, what is that? What is the technique used? RFMMs, so accelerometers, then uh, or make gyros, you know, anywhere you go, you know, the you can find out uh, uh, Kundus, uh, Dr. Paris Kundus place also you can find out where it is, you can go exactly that. So anything is possible, so a lot of chemical sensors because the you want to see is it a CO emission or CO2 emission or something is it within the limit, all that, smart door, seat, all that. Those things, everything is in 150 sensors, now they are adding. Example, one sensor, we have a manifold absolute pressure sensor or called, a temp, uh, this is mainly to measure the uh, the uh, the pressure in the engine and uh, oh, the uh, automotive uh, things, which is uh, SCL, as a, uh, SCL and Precall designed together under NPMAS program. Now it is going for productionization. They tested a pressure sensor. We're having a temperature also indication. They want it for the automotive application, mainly for a pressure ratio control and other things. Now, can I use for biomedical application? How many people are diabetic? I don't know. How many, even I myself may be diabetic. So simply stand on an area of a pressure sensor. Your contour of your leg, uh, the pressure contour, can give you whether you are diabetic or not, qualitatively, not quantitatively. It's possible to measure, like occupy pressure you are talking, occupuncture you are talking, can I have this technique? Yes, you have an area of pressure sensor, simply stand on that. For that, how to package it, the sensor? This is done in the instrumentation department of uh, NH of Science and uh, MEM sensors are used, oil filled and with a simple uh, rubber on the top. <coughs> so it uh, measures that and one can use for even for your comfort, for your house and even uh, vehicles, uh, see vehicle seats and other things. Wireless micro pump, I think uh, this, uh, uh, already done uh, even in uh, IIT Kharagpur and uh, or uh, Somandas Kundu is there and uh, Bidana was there. So I think these are the sensors where without valve, a peristatic wireless pump can operate. And you have a PZT 
uh, on this diaphragm. So, it operates it depending on the frequency it can suck and it can deliver without work and it is a very small size and low power maybe 5 volts it operates and it gives you mainly for biomedical application as well as for when drug delivery where you want to use uh, you know, for the uh, applications uh, where you want only few drops so for that purpose. Of course, I forgot to bring one more slide a wall of such, such things if you convert it to a peristatic pump you can lift say 1 mm column of water to 12 meters or 13 meters with the 3 volts and 40 milliamps 125 quarter watt of a power can lift a 1 mm or 2 mm column to 12 meters that's what we have seen not in this type but peristatic only but uh, with the tube. So of course for uh, helicopters you know the lot of accidents happening in the helicopter even uh, that is uh, even though disaster may recently you saw in Uttarakhand also. So a lot of sensors they are planning even uh, anything happens to that well in advance if you are able to know so can you take care of that. So a lot of sensors are there including uh, the temperature, pressure, speed, uh, strain on the because of the wind or something strain on the blades all that and everything speed including the speed and other things. So a lot of sensors are being used all MEMS based sensors. I told you the rotating machinery like a Kaveri engine for our light uh, compact aircraft or some aircraft whenever you want to do it is rotating in high speed and you want to measure the speed you want to measure the strain or uh, stress on the blades and the temperature cavitation everything yes it's possible every sensor will be there and through the um, your RF network you can get or by optical also you can get. So a lot of like you have uh, combustion process sensing turbine power plant sensing you have wireless uh, vibration sensing all health monitoring everything you can do that using that. So these are the things. Of course, the products are enormous. You can have three axis MEMS. This is a old design. Now, presently, everything in a single chip is available for an accelerometer. Accelerometer is very nicely explained by Professor Larry. So, with that, I want to tell you the scope is uh, innumerable. I am giving some time for a discussion. So, innumerable, you have the accelerometers and the pressure sensors. At present, already defense is uh, starting to use. Aerospace, health monitoring, accelerometers, shape memory, magnetic resistive, pressure sensors, and all that. Space, we are working on pressure sensors, optical gyros, propulsion system. Of course, the basic what I saw first, uh, what the professor really explained to you, the quartz thing, Somandas, and the quartz thing, what at present it has gone to a, in, a, uh, in a way it can be used for uh, the satellite application now. And uh, we have seen one more uh, application of this, whatever you have uh, designed those days. Can we use for tsunami sensing, which I am not covering here because that is out of the syllabus. So in the tsunami, how, how many of you know what is tsunami? I am not talking Himalayan tsunami, actual tsunami, huh? tide. What is Su? What is tsunami? Tsunami. Su is a harbor. Nami means wave. So harbor wave. So it goes to very high. Why it goes very high? So in the 3000, 4000 meter below the ocean, there is a, a tectonic thing and you have a small earthquake. Due to that, you know, 3000 meters below means you have 300 bar pressure, 300 atmosphere of pressure. There, a small change is only 3 millibar pressure. Over 300 bar, 3 millibar, 0 0.003, you have to measure. So very, very accurately, you have to measure. This sensor, even today, they use a DG quartz, US. They use only the resonating quartz beam sensor is used because small delta F frequency change one can use for this measurement even today they are using it very expensive one sensor with the, this thing costs maybe few lakhs because you should uh, that is stability and the accuracy and uh, you can see the repeatability of the sensor and accurately to measure the 3 millibar over uh, 300 bars of pressure so very, very 3 to 4 millibar some pressure measure. so very accurate so DG quartz is doing that so this system will help we have tried uh, some of the system what I have done uh, with the ASU and uh, last two when I was there is giving very good results. Something like 7 to 10 hertz per uh, millibar we got very good output. One can forward make it uh, to use for uh, tsunami application this quartz thing. So that is one thing I want to tell you. Yes, it is possible to use for so many other application and um, even humidity sensing other things okay. So you have the optical gyros propulsion systems. I think uh, okay that uh, you may show the uh, the 
uh, your uh, thrusters and other things. I, don't, I, I, I may not show you that. So then airbags, tire pressures, fuel injection, drug infusion system, micro needles and all that. Lot of applications. These are the scope for packaging electronics and other things. I have summarized then and there, but still I want to tell you it is possible to make, because you people are young and young professors and young students and researchers, it's possible to fabricate cheaper, smaller and lower cost. When China can do, why not India? Isn't it? You are getting low cost toys from China, isn't it? Whether we are getting the same cost toys in India, all automatic toys and other things. The MEMS is used extensively for toy in China and other places. Can you use it? Can you make it? I'm not telling you compete with them. I'm not telling that, but can you use it for that? So there is a power micro. Uh, so is a lower power micro devices for electronics to support various applications. I'm not talking about a toy here. So back to the MEM sensor like temperature, pressure, flow, acoustic level, acceleration, already available. Is already packaged for harsh environmental, uh, for harsh already available. So can it to make it cheaper or better? Specification can improve. Packaging of devices like sensors and actuators depends on its application and so is the cost. Automotive application cost may be 50 to 100 rupees. Same sensor I can use for space. It may cost 70, 80,000 rupees because the packaging is different. Same basic sensor, pressure sensor if I use for space will be different because it has to undergo vibration, shock, uh, then uh, your uh, humidity, radiation levels, uh, all these uh, temperature, everything it has undergo. And you have to package such a way that is a robust. That's all. The packaging depends upon the application, biomedical application. Can I use the sensor with like this? No. You have to make it a specific sensors, so small and embedded and uh, biocompatible. You can't use some of the things. Lead you cannot use. You can't use some of the, uh, even uh, the whatever you are using, the epoxies. You cannot use. Cyanoacrylic capacity, you cannot use. So how to do that? So those things. So that is the packaging depends upon mainly on the, you have to tell that, depends on application. What is the application about the biomedical process industry? Only op, uh, atmospheric or some uh, other use is that. The functions of an electronic sensor package are to protect power, see, to, are to protect power and cool the microelectronic chips. This is important. I told you in the beginning itself, what is the, what is packaging and what it means, I told you. So all this you have to take care of and by that, Yes, you can make one electrical and mechanical connection between sensor and uh, electronic part and the outside world. That is very important. So, of course, the current system technology like uh, system on chip, multi-chip module and the system in package. Apart from the, I am not talking about the wafer level chipset scale package is very important. Now it is becoming very, very famous. Wafer level chipset scale packaging. In the wafer level, everything you can do it. That one. Then you have a flip chip or plastic ball grid array, that is the latest techniques, which is uh, yet to be qualified for uh, some of the major uh, uh, strategic applications. These are things. So currently for people to go for, if they are interested, you can go for these things like uh, wafer level chipset scale packaging or uh, which I am not covering here. So with this, uh, I will uh, stop at this point. You have uh, references, uh, everywhere I have given the references so that you can uh, refer and uh, also some of the books including the packaging course, what I'm uh, teaching, and uh, the instrumentation book, Rao Tumala, you know, Fundamentals of Microsystem Packaging. Then uh, this uh, Samir and PRC1, uh, Georgia, uh, Atlanta, then Thairan. So these are the references. With this, let me stop here. And uh, any questions? I think I have some time for question and answer. Yes. Like yeah, it is, no, no, it is, uh, it is there. I think when I, uh, Professor Mo, uh, someone does me explain you, that is there. You can do that. Yes. Only technique how you do, process how you do, that is important. Is it one over or you will go in a, a different pillars for that, how you use it, that is important. You can do it. There are ways to do it. Only the tech, what, when you process it, the process how you do it is important. That he will tell you how the sacrificial removal can be removed. One you remove first, then second one. Or both at a time you want to remove, how to do that? Yeah, this is done. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. This is done. Of course, there is a one uh, uh, research also going on on a double diaphragm pressure sensor using that technique. Two diaphragm technique. So it's being done. And different stages. 
one is a lower diameter, a higher diameter, and lower diameter. Yes. Yeah. Right. See, uh, you you have seen any one RF uh, MEMS how it's connected? Yeah. See, you have a yes. This is a very good question. See, RF will al always have a problem, and it is always the bonding. The, what I told you, bonder cannot use. It's a deep wire bonder. If you go to SCL Chandigarh or you go to uh, Delhi IIT with the Shubha, Professor Shubhan Kaul's lab, you see it's a little different. This RF MEMS is uh, actually packaged in a different way. Even the substrate you have to see because your all RF things depends on the substrate uh, character also, isn't it? A dielectric constant. So once you have designed your MEMS, your pad size should be thicker than the normal thing because what they do after wire bonding, you solder that one to the micro dot connectors. It's a coaxial connectors called micro dot, not big connectors like a BNC connector, what we have in the oscilloscope. So micro dot connectors, almost 1.5 to 2 mm connectors with a center, this thing, exactly like BNC connector, but a center and outside you have that shielding property. You have to solder it there. So that cannot be done by the wire bonding. But now this same technique can be used using a ribbon bonding. They use a ribbon. It's a wire, there is a ribbon. Ribbon will be bonded by the similar machines. You use the ribbon bonding. Ribbon is about 1 mm. One point, different, little uh, thicker, uh, thicker and little uh, wider than the normal wire. So about 0.5 mm, 1 mm, and all available. So you have the ribbon of uh, copper, or you have uh, uh, aluminium, mainly the copper. You can <coughs> bond it or solder it. It is possible. There's what is known as a parallel gap welder. Hughes makes a parallel gap welder. You can use those welders, and these uh, whatever the uh, your uh, connector pin, micro dot connector pin is there. You can uh, you can place this and. Uh, weld it. It's a parallel gap welder. Simply give some uh, voltage and it welds at a single shot, comes out. And manually is possible. You simply leg with the pedal, it's a parallel gap welder goes there, hits the surface, melts it, joins that, comes out. Single shot. There's a capacitive charging and then discharging through this. Lots of it. it heats up and then joins. It's possible to do that. Only the tip or the, the fixtures, tools you have to design to suit your requirement. You can go to Hyderabad and Astra Microwave, I think they also do similar work. A lot of work is being done in Hyderabad. You can see that also. Yeah. Yes. So can you please give us the basic difference between these two? Hermetic. What is hermetic? Why is the name has come hermetic? Isolated, yes. Hermit, the sannyasi, or the, who we call uh, the person who there is a, a way, you know, worldly things are not there. So hermetic came like that. So here, the external world, for example, I have a hermetic seal. Whatever happening here, this atmosphere, one atmosphere, is not going inside. So it is completely sealed. Nothing is you know, seen by whatever happening here, heavy rain. No, inside is paka, same. No rain, nothing. Vacuum means vacuum only. If there is a pressure, same only. There are heavy, high temperatures. There may be change, but not too much change in that. But mainly the pressure variation, nothing will happen to that. Now, when you want to do that, you have to use a specific machines. I want to use this welding, what I told you, the hermetically sealed, what I want is a vacuum. I can't use a normal a TIG welding, MIG welding and all because it is atmosphere you are doing. What we do is electron beam welding where the complete chamber is evacuated to the 10 to the power minus 4, minus 5 tor. Have two things apart initially, everywhere you create vacuum, using a surround wall, bring that together here, together, then weld it. Everything under vacuum. When you weld it, then inside is vacuum, you weld it, you take it out now. Inside is always vacuum because it's nicely welded. What you, how do you know it's welded, is it really vacuum or not? Now pressure sensor we have put inside, for example. See, previously it was in atmosphere. Let me say it shows you zero output reading. All the bridge are balanced at zero. When I put inside and evacuate it, what happens to the diaphragm? Previously it was like that. Now, if because I evacuated it, other side is maybe atmosphere. It uh, bends like it either bends like this or bends like this. So you get an output. With that output, you can know yes, it is a vacuum is there inside or not. Then there is what is known as helium leak detector, mass spectrometer. So he, you can evacuate the welded joint and uh, check with the helium. You inject the helium 
helium you know why helium is used inert gas and then nitrous <coughs> so it can go to any cavity any holes you get an indication yes there is a leak we want for space application something like 10 to minus 7 minus 8 standard cc per second that level leak rate is required so we see every welded joint every brace joint where you want hermeticity we check for the helium leak detection so then you know that yes it is hermetically sealed non hermetically sealed these are non hermetically sealed if you put in water water goes inside hermetic sealed one if i put there no water will go inside you can atmosphere change outside you have five bar six bar nothing inside is a vacuum means vacuum only because hermetic sealed and uh, there are so many other uh, specification a electrical connector you want to bring out it has to withstand say 200 bar pressure 300 we pressurize the system see that it withstands 100 200 bar pressure your, your good question the worst case analysis means if i have to design a pressure sensor it is for 10 bar atmosphere for example sensor is for 10 bar i will test it for 20 bar pressure nothing should happen by chance 10 bar becomes a 13 14 bar it has to saturate and i should know yes output is saturated that means i am going higher value stop the pressurization or do some remedial action even the system fails the pressure sensor should not fail in any of the our normal design is worst case there is explosion happens okay pressure gone beyond certain limit oh this sensor should not fail it has to tell me why that explosion happened what is the pressure went temperature sensor has to tell me what temperature even though temperature sensor for 600 degree centigrade temperature went to 1000 it should tell me it is gone beyond 600 maybe 800 up to that linear after it maybe non linear or saturated it should show me yes temperature exceeded that's why it is failed so the design of a sensor should be such that worst case 1.5 times or 2 times it should be able to at least measure not that accurately but it should measure to certain extent tell us yes pressure has gone high temperature has gone high acceleration has gone high something like that depending upon the requirement you have to design No, no. If 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 we go back, you'll be seeing that. See the you want to measure the. For example, we'll talk, simply talk of your vehicle. Some vehicle you have a fuel, a petrol, or diesel. How you measure the diesel pressure, tank pressure? How you measure? How you measure? That diesel should be come in contact with the diaphragm, no? Or some tube or something? No. If it can't comes directly contact with the silicon. or aluminum or there is a epoxy some epoxy you know people will use uh, petrol if you have some uh, uh, this thing you will use uh, petrol and clean nicely it cleans so even the epoxy will in some epoxy will melt in uh, petrol or diesel uh, petrol so if you use uh, now your pressure sensor of mems directly the chip will come about and this will be separate and everything like our hand leg part everything will become separate separate you cannot use it will simply open out so you have to use some barrier which is not reacting with the petrol or diesel or acid or something like that so i use a stainless steel which is compatible with the petrol like stainless steel 304l there is a quality i can't use all the stainless steel some specific stainless steel the low carbon steels i have to use i use that austenitic stainless steel when i use it any time you do this nothing happens to that no corrosion no erosion nothing it won't now you have to faithfully transmit this pressure to the mems chip so you how to transmit faithfully you should in incompressible fluid you want so use your oil silicon oil for example use it so it faithfully transmits no doubt when you fill the oil there should not be any air bubbles see if there is air is there it itself will take care of you know the cushioning effect damps down and accuracy will reduce so you have to see that the completely air is uh, Uh, removed under vacuum system then fill the oil under vacuum so that no micro bubbles or something like that then you see that yes faithfully this pressure transmit to that and oil should not come out after one year or two years your oil should it should be hermetically sealed oil is oil there inside only it won't come out so it is hermetically sealed so there's how for corrosive media we use this thing this uh, oil filling technique you don't want corrosive media only atmospheric simply give a coating of Uh, some epoxy you can use for atmospheric you want only the uh, want to measure some uh, 
uh, conventional gas, argon, nitrogen, not required. But the wires, what I told you, the wires which is coming out from uh, uh, this thing, these wires have to be protected. The See, when the pressure is applied, if the wire is like this, okay, think, this is very small. But when the pressure is applied, this also goes down, goes up and down, no? What happens after some time? You go on doing like this always, what will happen? It will break. Similarly, when 1000 cycles close, it may break. So we give a protection coating on these wires. Wires are not allowed to move. And not on the diaphragm, but on the only wires everywhere. So they will be protected. So even when you go up and down, nothing will happen to the wire. Wire won't move it. Some of the places where it is not, you know, you don't want to uh, do that way. So you have to, some, you have to think also. Little bit, uh, you know, general knowledge also helps here. So that's what I want to show you here, specifically on one, one place. Maybe... <coughs> I can't stop, but I'll tell you here. See here, see here. Uh, you have this, and uh, the, these are the glass uh, beads, and glass, and this is a core. You now see, this uh, this uh, mem strip comes, and we attach with an epoxy, thermally conductive electric insulating. These wires, no. If I keep wires like that open, you have seen the wires. If I put the oil and all also, because of the oil going up and down, maybe a few microns, but the wire also goes up and down. So what we do, which I have not shown you, if I cover you can't see, so we put on that one, one epoxy called an NPR 100, we put it, it will be protected and also it is stuck to the base, it is electrically non-conductive, it is insulating and thermally conductive epoxy we put it, so then we do that, that's why. If time is there, I can show you the real cross-section, uh, what we have done now, but uh, I don't know whether I have that much. Uh, Uh, one, you can see the real 3D cross section possible. 3D. Maybe you will see. There is a 3D uh, animation, but I don't know. No, we're not able to do that. <coughs> Go back. No. See, this is how the assembly takes place in a 3D config. You have a diaphragm, which is, uh, uh, it comes there and we weld it uh, and we put this ball and screw and uh, the oil filling and all I'm not showing here. Then you see, this is uh, your wafer uh, that whatever the die, die is attached, of course, with the glass to this metal ceiling. Now, you may be able to see or I don't know, we'll see. And this is attached using an epoxy to this area, just to give an idea. So this is attached using an epoxy and wire bond. Wire bonding you are not able to see. See the, the cover, what you see that flat thing has come, this is nothing but covering of an epoxy on that. So that's what we do. Then we put all this become a capsule. We oil filled everything is a, become a capsule. Then electronics comes in this. So this is a PCB, which is bigger than this, you see, PCB. You should have EMA protection, you have a back to back diodes, power, power, power supply protection, and you should have a output protection, everything. Then put a connector there and then weld it, all that. So even the sensor is so small, you can see how big it is. It becomes almost this big size. And fully protected, hermetically sealed, nothing happens to that. So that's how this uh, uh, is done. Just to give you an idea. Because you asked that question, so I thought, okay, I'll show you that. And you can see that each and everything you have to take care of in the beginning. How we do this diaphragm, how will the diaphragm to be attached, what is the dimension in microns level, and how you put this uh, die here, and how you attach the die and this, how you weld this joint, the electron, and how you put this ball and what is the dimension. This is only 2 mm, uh, uh, one, 1 mm ball and 2 mm uh, length uh, thread. 
an M2 into 0.4 and how you do is how you weld it, you take care of this, how you put a PCB inside, well, and how you wire it and how you port it, this one, and how you put a connector with the ring because connector cannot sit directly, how you put a connector there, electric connector and take these leads out from the connectors, everything has to be taken in advance. Our actual aim is to be only the sensor, but you, to make it working for some specific purpose, you have to take care of all this. Just to give an idea, it was not that because you ask a specific questions and putting it. Now this sensor, even if you drop it, nothing should happen. You vibrate it, 13.5G, very high vibration levels, nothing should happen. No output should come. Even if you give a shock, you drop it, nothing should happen. So that is the philosophy and somebody will tamper it or something. Output is short circuit. EMI EMC 461C RF uh, that uh, high frequency you give it. So we have put EMI filters between the power supply and the ground and also output and ground. See EMI can pass through the power supply also. There are three types of uh, electromagnetic interference. It can be conducting, can be susceptibility, electromagnetic and radiation. All these three CS it is called CSCR something like that. All that in 461 mil standard. Very, very important. It may work as a sensor, but when you have a near, nearby some water is running, you should not give some output due to that. A tube light is having a choke. Choke automatically, you know, when you switch on, it gives high voltage, no? So it should not. All this you have to take care of when you design things. So you have to see the worst case scenario, worst case analysis. Not only that, because you ask a specific question, I am telling you one more uh, point here. You have to see that any any register or component, whatever you used, is properly chosen. If I have, a, for example, half a watt register, I cannot load it to half a watt. I have to derate to 50%. I will go only for half of that. Quarter watt, half a watt, I will go to quarter watt only. A transistor, which is a, or a diode, for example, PIV of a diode is 100 volts. I cannot use for 100 volts. I use only 50 volts because I don't know any time the sudden peak due to a solar flare or due to uh, some lightning. What does it go? That's why your TV is that. This will go. No, because your protection is. So when protection is given, you should give 100% protection. We say derating of the component. You have to derate the component. You have to do worst case analysis. You see the reliability of the complete system. Reliability you have to see. Then only you have to do. Which I'm not covering. It's a uh, four classes of reliability analysis. And there is a um, MTTF that is called a mean time uh, between failures. You have to see when it fails. We make uh, not one, uh, two, but we make 10 or 20 numbers. See whether all are repeating the same with the temperature, pressure, vibration, shock, and all that. And we have to aging it. Aging you have to do. You have to simply keep what happens after one month, two months, three months. After one year, it has to show the same output what is shown today. Is it possible or not? Then only I say it's reliable. That's all. So, so many things are there which I am not able to cover. You have to do a lot of qualification test, acceptance test and do it. Even though I 10 bar, I will apply 15 bar and see how is that. 15 bar I give 10 times. Even though it has to withstand 100 degrees centigrade, I will go to 140 degrees temperature and see what happens. It need not work on 140, but I will see what happens. Whether it degrades the performance or not. Low temperature, I have to go to minus 40, plus I will go to minus 60 temperature. See what happens. You know, minus 40 sufficient, I say no, I will go to minus 60. All these things taken. So these are the things uh, what I thought I will cover. And uh, any any more questions? Huh? LTCC. I cannot explain that is uh, uh, that you have to go to CMET Pune or somebody here who is uh, experienced there. Patak. You can write a, uh, uh, I am not an expert on LTCC or HTCC. So low temperature co-fired uh, ceramics. So there is a Patak is there. Uh, Girish Patak from CMET Pune. If you give your email ID, I will pass it on to him. He will give you all details on that. And it's available in the internet. Beautifully given all LTCs. And you can know if you are very much, you are from which place? Aurangabad, go to Pune, very close by. Pune, CMET, you go, Girish, full facility is available. You can see how the LTC is fabricated. And there's the same water packaging is done in LTCC. How they do the packaging and how they go for space, defense, and commercial application they do, you can see. Irish Patak. They, they have international conference. You can attend that. Uh, yes, you uh, IEEE plus. Inter, why not you attend? Then you will get a lot of. He's giving a talk and he'll be telling about LTCC. Okay? Yeah. Huh? What is that? Depends upon requirement. I told you, see, for example, you want a cathedral tip sensor. 
a maybe a uh, maybe pressure sensor or temperature sensor or a uh, camera 1 mm by 1 mm that's what less than see catheter i can't put a catheter of this one to isn't it so smaller no that's not painless surgery okay i forgot to put some of the things uh, because of time now people don't want the pain no you have to go and come out without any pain so can you have a painless drug delivery system yes using mems we have micro needles of 100 micron diameter uh, outside inside is only 60 micron total length is a 1 1 mm to 2 mm even if you put here the patch you won't get pain at all that is what one thing is the patch 4 by 4 or 5 by 5 matrix of micro needles which are not shown you and that is uh, this insulin is injected through a small micro pump and it goes inside without your knowledge it can go on giving 140 micro liters bolus dose when you want otherwise it can give 140 micro liter 100 micro liter depending upon you, uh, your requirement it can go on giving for a diabetic patient this is one thing dentist for example you have a, i have forgot to show you the dentist he gives you injection for remo- uh, extraction of teeth isn't it painful or not <coughs> no painless you can have a shock tube simply keep here shock tube and shock through shock that same uh, anesthetic drug is uh, gone to your gum become anesthetic you can remove without any pain so with the shock tube for say jagdish of ineos of science they have done some studies similar things bamboo preservative is very important bamboo is you know simply it is vanishing so you can preservative can be done by the shock if you give injection very difficult 40% so with the bamboo bamboo preservative done by that then cleaning of the silicon wafers and all that you can create a small tsunami inside the lab by giving a shock all that so you can do that so the extraction of sandalwood oil very difficult to get the sandalwood oil when you extract normally like a sugar cane juice if you give a shock 80% 90% oil can be extracted these are the things are possible so so many things you can think there is actually no limit depending upon the requirement if it is 100 mega 100 mega if it is a catheter tip sensor 1 mm by 1 mm catheter size 1 mm catheter diameter okay but if it is a space that 1 mm will become 25 mm for me because I, all this pcb is big my uh, header is big everything that what you have seen is so big and diameter is 1 inch 25 mm diameter very big if it is for automotive it is about 10 mm by 10 mm by plastic package what i shown you same thing only same sensor but packaging is different so same sensor for uh, uh, intracranial pressure sensing or for uh, catheter for uh, space for defense you know that is different size depends on how you choose if you want you can make it 1 mm 1 mm or you may 2 mm it's same depending upon the requirement you can choose i think ah yeah tell me one last question okay 